Hey, hello everybody. So we're going to be playing some Morrowind as soon as I figure out how to make the uh, image on the screen appear. It's already supposed to be there, but it's not there. So I'm going to see about running a window capture to Morrowind and hitting the capture button. There we go. Cool. That did it. Hello, everybody. We've been... Uh, Let's see, we've been playing this for seven days, 14 hours, 59 minutes. That's uh, that's some playtime there. We're on day 239. We are the Archmaster of House Redoran, and we are a curate in the Tribunal Temple. That is a big deal. Um, we have decided to see what uh, seditious stuff Cur uh, Caius ha has been... Uh, uh, dealing with having established our quote-unquote cover life our cover life turned out to be um, a, a quite a big deal as uh, we established ourselves in the land of Vardenfell uh, uh, however trying to figure out the details about um, uh, what what Caius is up to this uh, shed some light on the whole six house after all the tribunal temple themselves had us go into Red Mountain to Dagoth Earth's own stronghold so, uh, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, it's a quite, a, quite a big deal. So, we're gonna run on back over, make sure we got everything done. Yeah, so it looks like the spy master took my report, progress of truth. Um, do some other freelance jobs, maintain our cover life, and then he'll get some orders for us. We, we did some, uh, we, we wandered around a bit, uh, did, did a couple, uh, quests for the Thieves Guild just so that we can keep, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, what do you, uh, keep our access to their perks, of course. Um, noting that, of course, that is way below the status of, you know, the Archmaster of House Redoran. But, uh, you know, we, we've been a weird person to begin with. So, don't think about it too hard. Um, we started as a freelance adventurer. And we are basically always a freelance adventurer, despite being on the council of... Uh, House Redoran. Anyway, uh, we are also, I believe, now a disciple in the Tribunal Temple, which is one rank up from Curate. However, we are not going to become the um, uh, the leader of the Tribunal Temple. That is not something, uh, that is not in our destiny. Uh, uh, we are instead going to be figuring out what's up with the Sixth House. Going into Red Mountain, seeing all those uh, worshippers, that, that, that definitely made us... Uh, a little more receptive to hearing about uh, Caius's plans with the Sixth House and whatnot. Hmm. We want to learn more. And so, Caius, hello. Are you here to discuss your orders, or is there something else you want? Uh, yes, yes, indeed. All right. Um, yesterday wind? I, I don't know what you mean, but uh, let's see here. Oh, by the way, anyone uh, who knows about Baldur's Gate, this is a uh, this is a social media post by uh, the head of publishing at Larian Studios, taking a Twitter hiatus until genuinely uh, curious discourse manifests. I'll be deleting the X app and conducting all business through official channels such as email and personal events. See you on the other side. See, he he's a smart one. He, he's a smart one, that there, uh, Larian, uh, guy. Yeah. Um, it, it, that, that is, uh, some, uh, we, we should all be learning from that example. I won't, of course, because I like to, you know, broadcast, uh, questionable thoughts. And where better to do that than, um, than on the, the, the Twitters. Um, and then people get angry at me. Um, because, uh... You know, and uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Um, you never get me to laugh. I've laughed a fair number of times. Um, I don't know. Um, anyway, in, in other news, uh, No Man's Sky continues to get updates. It's uh, rather interesting. So, uh, yes. And uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that, that's about it. So, 
Um, I think we're basically good to go. Yes. M Manny, Marco, and Oblivion is pretty bad. It's true. Um, I, uh, yeah, how do I put this? Uh, high school was, um, um, I was mostly a loner during the first year, but afterward, I, uh, ended up, uh, falling into a couple niches, um, I had some interesting experiences on a yacht, and then, um, ended up spending the last two years hanging out with, uh, uh, the lady who, uh, would eventually become my wife. Don't get me wrong, uh, we were not dating at the time, just hanging out as friends. It, uh, well, we, di we didn't, uh, we didn't have that kind of relationship until, uh, college after we met again we we lost touch and met again hmm which you know was honestly a fluke a good fluke but a fluke anyway let me see here do, 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 do. all right hitting buttons here we go we need an ashlander informant i have heard of a fellow in aldrin named hasur zainsubani an Ashlander who left the Waste to become a wealthy trader. They say the Ashlanders like to give and receive presents. Take these 100 drakes. Find out what Zain Subani likes and get him a gift. Then give him the gift and see if he will tell you about the Ashlanders and the Nereverine cult. Then report back to me. Got it. So we're heading up to Aldrun. We're going to figure out what this, uh, what Zain Subani likes and see if we can accomplish this. I have knowledge to share with you. No, you don't. This town is Balmora, council seat of House Lalu. Mm -hmm. We're loyal citizens of the Empire and proud of it. Right. And most of us, anyway. Yes. We're heading up to Aldrun in the rain. <clears throat> I suppose we'll go uh, swoop by and pick up Fargoth real quick. Yes. When working for the Blades, be an offense to the temple. I just talked about that. We're trying to figure out what he uh, thinks about, um, uh, or, or what he knows about Dagoth Ur. We we've been the temple has sent us to Dagoth Ur's own stronghold. We fought the Ash Vampires. We've crawled through the dungeon. We've killed several of Dagoth's lieutenants, and and yet uh, still we have not found what we're looking for. So. Uh, this is this is something we need to figure out. Yes, indeed. Do 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 do. Uh huh. Um, definitely not a. I mean, I do have uh, a bunch of Magic: The Gathering cards, but that was uh, more a. Um, that was like the end of middle school, I think. Maybe. I I honestly don't have the timeline uh, fresh in my head anymore when it comes to hobbies. It's been too many years. Yes. Mm. Okay. The temple trusts our judgment at this point. We've uh, uh, we we are fairly high ranked. That's unusual. It is. It is unusual. Let's go, Fargoth. Come on. We must head to Aldrun. This is serious business. Hopefully we can get uh, to Aldrin as soon as possible and deal with uh, the shenanigans. Let me say here. Anyway. I'm going to grab some water there. Drink. Got to drink the water coming out of the pipe there. Oh, by the way. I saw Dune Part 2 yesterday. Uh, watched it at the Alamo Draft House. It's rather nice. Instead of popcorn, you order a meal. So I had like a, a really big, uh, what do you call it, uh, steak sandwich with uh, some uh, fries on the side. And, uh, and, you know, I watched Dune Part 2. And I got to say, it's a great movie and a terrible adaptation. Yes. 
Yep. Great adaptation, terrible movie. Hey, wait. The other way around. Lol. <laughs> t t sorry. <laughs> what do you mean you're saying things in reverse? I'm saying things in reverse. Okay, so it's a it's a terrible adaptation, but a great movie. Okay, like I I enjoyed it very much, but like knowing the book is a curse, is a curse. I'm mean, I'm just saying, like if you you don't know the book, then it's just it's just a great experience all around. Yes. Now you're going to get it. Okay. We're almost to Caldera. We're going to go around Caldera this time, I think. Let me double check to see if there's anything we want to sell here. Eh, what the hell? We can sell some weapons in the pawn shop. Well, that's fine. All right. You wonder how they're going to adapt Dune Messiah now? <laughs> oh, jeez. Children of Dune. Children of Dune first. Just do it. Yep, yep. Chops 90% of the politics out of the book. Yes, and inverts Chani's character in order to create a foil to Paul. I understand what the develop uh, developer... What the... Uh, um, director slash writer was trying to do I, I i understand it artistically speaking i just uh um seeing someone act completely contrary to their normal um uh, you, you know to how i had seen them before is kind of off-putting that's all of course i don't expect adaptations to be faithful that's uh you know but people fans of the halo show fans of fallout uh, tv show or sorry uh, fa fans of Halo, fa fans of Fallout, they're all going to get off-put because of, uh, y you know, uh, or, or been off-put because of uh, adaptations not being faithful. But I've just, I've resigned my, uh, to the fact that uh, we're in a world where adaptations are not made for the original audience, not for the original fans. They are made to try to hook new people. To try to get new people into that thing and using word of mouth via the pre-existing intellectual properties and um, developers are learning that for very popular things it's actually uh, a detriment to uh, um, to try to do that you said for an imaginary audience for a perspective audience for a theoretical audience Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. Star Wars is hilarious because um, Star Wars wasn't um, focus-tested uh, like video games are these days. Star Wars was born of Hollywood nepotism. And... Uh, now, only now in the television series, uh, are they going back and trying to pander. And uh, it's great because you, you first you go, you have no artistic soul because uh, you're trying to make your own story using the existing property. Then you have no ex artistic soul because you're pandering to the, the pre-existing audience. And, um, in both cases, um, uh, you know, like, it, you're, you're using the corpse of, uh, something else to, uh, do what you want with it. Yeah, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I saw two episodes, uh, sorry, I saw one, I had two episodes of Discovery and one episode of Picard, and I'm, I'm convinced now that I have no desire to interface with New Trek at all. Um, I found that Strange New Worlds was a nice, uh, a nice parody of the original Star Trek, um, and I thought that was okay, just okay, not good, not great, just okay. 
Mm. No, not the message. No, you're you're wrong. Uh, you are 100% wrong. It's Holly uh, what what's actually happening is Hollywood nepotism is uh getting people jobs and uh yeah, it's it's very silly. Uh, it's unsustainable as well. Somewhat like the uh, AAA games industry. It's going uh, like Hollywood's going to have to be torn down and rebuilt based off of financial failures. Oof, oof. Um yeah, let me see here. Star Trek fans always have Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine isn't perfect, but it's my favorite. That's for sure. Yep. Let me see. All right, let's go. Hello, sir. Get lost. Yeah, you see that right there? Ba 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 ba. Ascribed to malice, what can uh, equally be explained by incompetence? Yes, that's that's usually how I operate these days. Uh, people get rather annoyed because uh, in the games industry, there's a lot of uh, correlation causation. Um, like pe people um, ascribing to, um, like there there was a couple dirty deals going on over in the corner here. So people are assuming that's happening in the entire AAA game space, which is not true. Um, in fact, it's most of the bad games that are coming out are due to stupid people, not malicious people. And um, it's usually sales and marketing people who get promoted up uh, to an area where they then want to make games about... Uh, as money-making platforms and not, you know, good games. So, uh, that, that, that's where most of the issues lie. Hmm. It's funny because, uh, in doing that, they make the games unprofitable. It's like they set up their own, uh, their own failures. It's great. Yep. Anyway, uh, let's see here. We need to cast It Just Works on him so that he likes us. You see, currently he hates us. So we convince him that it just works, and now he's bought into the hype. There you go. Yep. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sell him all the fishing poles as well as uh, one of these six house scimitars. That's well beyond what he can pay. God damn it. All right, so he can't. we can't sell him a six house scimitar after all. What we will try to sell him is this uh, glass item. Okay, so that's that's fair enough. I think we'll just take the rest of his money then. Uh, we actually will give him a deal on this. There you go. Done. Ah, uh, greet. Mm -hmm. What shall we talk? Yes. Such good company. Welcome. Those are fringe cases, Elvin. The problem is that the the public, the general public has noticed correlation between bad games and certain elements in those games. And they've ascribed dirty deals on the side to something that is that is supposedly industry-wide and it's not. The reality is that we're getting less and less AAA games because... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The big companies want to spend less money on, like, developing games and more money on, uh, sorry. They want to spend less money on developing games overall, and they want to have a few flagship games that make all the money. Kind of like, uh, you know how we have the Fortnite, right? Which is, uh, like, basically Epic went all in on Fortnite, and they've hidden all their old games because they uh, they want to use that as their single revenue-driving platform. And other companies are desperate to have their own Fortnite in that sense, right? And so um, they will be... They, they continually make terrible games with the intention of uh, creating a revenue-generating um, platform that is essentially a game that they sold and um what a lot of people saw was um 
they, they saw some uh, common threads between uh, like dirty deals on the side and terrible games on the other side, even though they're all terrible games. They follow trends instead of setting them correct. They are unwilling. It, it, when you could have a small studio for, you know, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, you know, we're talking like a handful of people. Um, when you could have that, like, just a bare minimum of people produce a game, and then you could you could be exploratory with it. But when your games are at a hundred million dollars or more, you can't be exploratory anymore. You need guaranteed uh, returns on your investment. Otherwise, it's just devastating. And so when when you see games that don't uh, wait, I need to get. I, I don't know why I'm going back. Fuck I Okay, like I was, I was being stupid. I need to, I need to go through Caldera to Aldrune. I was I I like I sold everything in in Aldrune. I'm ready to go back now. No, I I didn't even sell everything either. What's the best part? Oh God, the rat! Fargo, destroy the rat. Good work. What was I saying? Uh, do, 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 do. So yes, it's funny because most of the games people complain about, um, I either haven't played because the gameplay looked uninteresting to me, or um, you know, haven't come out yet. It's funny how many Fable tourists there are, though. Like, people who've never played the old Fable games who complain about the uh, Fable trailer, which was just a cinematic trailer, right? Like, Fable characters always looked goofy, and depending on what, like, life path you put them on, they can look ugly as well. Like, have you ever seen what happens to your Fable character if you go the evil route? You just go pure, uh, like, negative karma? Like, your character ends up like <laughs> looking so fucking goofy point is that someone's like uh, fable tourists the people who've never played fable looked at a cinematic trailer and they started screeching like like because uh of a perceived injustice that they saw in something that wasn't even gameplay yeah what say you dunmer I say loot. Fargoth. Okay. I, I need this glass pauldron. I'm going to try to sell you things, sir. Do, 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 do. She looked horrendous? Yes. But that was a terrible cinematic trailer, and it wasn't representative of gameplay. And you know it deep down in your heart of heart. Pe people just re at cinematic trailers because... Um, no, no. They want to complain about something. Alright. Go goofy goofs. Yes. Exactly. Alright. I'm going to take this master hammer. The grand master hammer. I'm going to ask for 2,000 flat on the deal. Yes. Uh -huh. Easy targets to drive engagement. Yes. Do you think Fable as a series is really uh, middling in quality? Yes. Uh, I would say that uh, Fable 1 was a very interesting experience. But what I saw in Fable 2 was only... Like, what I saw that was interesting in Fable 2 was only a fraction of the actual game. Which is unfortunate. And uh, what I saw in Fable 3 was kind of offensive, in a way. Um... As in, like, it really wasn't well thought out at all. Like, they had a good idea and they couldn't figure out how to manifest it. That's what I'm trying to say. But, um... Fable 1 was, I think, was a product of its time, more than anything. Uh, you said it didn't age well for you. That's, that's what I mean. Like, it really was a product of its time, I think. Okay. We're heading north. Do, 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 do. 
Mm -hmm. See, it's their jobs moaning uh, about clickbait to produce click more clickbait. Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is that, uh, oops, here we go. Gotta fight Nick Sound. What? I missed. And then my second hit killed it. Good. Um. You know, the music was pretty good all the way through the Fable series. From beginning to end, I think. Oh. Dead whelps. Let me see here. That's a regular guar. That's eh, fine. Stella Blade still ha or Stellar Blade still hasn't come out yet, and people are still complaining about it. Um, it's great. You know, I, I just asked, uh, "Hey, what's uh, what's the game about? Like actual like gameplay and uh, experience and story wise?" And you know, there, there's a demo and. Everyone's fixated on uh, on horny instead of you know what does it play like? I'm sure by the next um, by the time the game is out, we can determine whether it's a good game or not. But for now, uh, popular discourse is just uh, either sexy woman good or sexy woman bad. And that's very unfortunate. Like, I can tell you all about Onichambra Origin, which contains Sexy Woman. Because I like that game. And I can tell you all about Bayonetta or Nier Automata. But, uh... Nobody really has anything to say about Stellar Blade at the moment, other than, uh... Perverts. Yes. Now, I personally wouldn't know anything about, you know, things of that nature at all. Not even a bit. Hmm. Okay, let's get going. So, uh, onwards and sideways. Yep. Play here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Thankfully, uh, Final Fantasy XIV has included uh, Clive from uh, what do you call it? Final Fantasy XVI recently in its uh, new events. So we're gonna get a whole new wave of uh, Clive fan art, and uh, that makes me happy. You know, that's the funny thing about uh, like bait games like Stellar Blade and stuff is that um, like it it doesn't make me want to play the bait game. It makes me want to search a certain website for that character name to see what kind of fan art exists. Not actually make a purchase. Kind of like Overwatch, you know? Okay, well, we're in Aldrun now. Mm hmm. You say a certain rule site, but a certain rule site only contains the generally the most extreme imagery. You can t you can find like a wider variety at uh, maybe a Buru sort of uh, site instead of a rule site. You know what I mean? Uh, a little, a little more variety. Just, just saying. Ahem. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. So. What we need to do right now is find Hasor. Uh, 
Yes, people know the names of all the female heroes despite never having played uh, Overwatch. I played uh, Overwatch, like I really enjoyed Overwatch during its closed beta, all the way up until like the first patch, right? The, the first major patch introduced Ana, and she was filling a, a niche that the game needed, which was a long range healer. And I think that's great. Afterward, like Sombra and so on, just overcomplicated the game and turned it into something I didn't care for. Like there was a good balance in the initial game, the way it was set up. And then they destroyed that balance with characters like uh, Brigitte and such, to the point where I just looked at the game and said, I don't want to play this. And so, um, even before like Overwatch 1 was killed and replaced by the, the zombie uh, free-to-play cash grab that was Final Fantasy 16, I... Um, I just looked at the whole situation and went, uh, I, I don't want to play this game anymore. It, like, even before it was, uh, changed out. Anyway, uh, ahem. We're done with those little, uh, cans, so what I'm gonna do... Oops. Okay. Oops. Gotta move stuff around, hold on. Yeah. Right, so as I was saying, I... I got my coffee ready now. Hmm. Good coffee. Okay. I uh, was too lazy to calibrate the second camera, so it's just kind of eh. Tis what it is. Rat and pot. Excuse me. Yes, honored guest. Uh, yeah, I need to know about ha uh, Hasurman. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, uh, Hasur Zanavani. You don't know anything about him, do you? Okay. Hello, Mr. Kajit. Do you know anything about Hasur Zanavani? Excuse me. Do you know anything about Hasur? None of you do. Okay, this is a problem. Uh, don't drink water? What are you talking about? Of course I drink water. Uh, I, I got water right here. Um, but, uh, why do I need to drink it right now? I have caffeinated drink. Okay, maybe this is the wrong area. This guy wouldn't, they don't know anything about Hassor here. Gotta go find another area. Is it the rat? It's not the Rattan Pot, then. Hmm. Was it the Council Club? I could have sworn it was... Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. So... This area over here. I'm Angoth the Jeweler. It's a real pleasure to make your acquaintance. Hey, Angoth. How's it going? Good to see ya. Um... Swift this is an honor for me. I have forgotten. I'm He's got to be in a different building. Because, like, this was a sixth house uh, ash statue dealer here, and I killed him as a part of a quest. So he couldn't have been uh, the guy we're looking for. Hmm. The game didn't warn me about this character's death, threat of prophecy, blah, 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 blah. So, uh... Hmm. see this might be it hello sir uh do you know anything about hasser zarabani he's reading or in the bar got Welcome it traveler. do you I'm speak Bulgari freely Farani, oh. publican of the aldscar inn here in alfin mm. we rent beds and i have a limited selection of goods for barter if you're new here i can also tell you where to look for other services or a specific place nearby right if you're looking for someone in particular i may be able what about Hassor? He's a trader and a wealthy one. He has his own room here. He was born an Ashlander and knows their speech and custom and has grown rich by trading with them for the things prized by Westerners. Is that what you wanted to know? Hmm. I see, I see. Well, that should be fine, Tell I suppose. Tell your friends about this place. Is it Powell's getting some updates? 
I recently mentioned this on the social medias. That, um... What do you call it? Uh, Pal World has, um... Like, people were comparing Pal World to Helldivers in terms of drop-off, right? But the, the thing is, Helldivers 2 has, uh... Is, like, a fully public, uh, fully finished game. And, uh, Pal World is early access. Uh, Helldivers 2 has actual updates where they've added new weapons and, uh, you know, new enemies. Whereas, Pal World has yet to put out any major updates other than bug fixes. The game needed bug fixes desperately, but what I'm just saying, like, people are talking about population drop-off, you know, between, uh, the two games. And it makes sense why that population drop-off is the way it is. It's very interesting. Because, you, you know, like, uh... Uh, people will go, well, it doesn't have a million people. The game's dead! Uh, it, it's very impressive how people were screaming about that. Uh, um, let, me, let me look at uh, the Steam charts really quick. I'm curious. Very curious. All right, so it looks like, unfortunately... Unfortunately, everybody... Look, look at this. That's... Uh, Looks like Pow World is dead. They only have 57,000 players as of uh, yesterday. Y you know, like an, in an indie game, you know, not like, uh, in early access. Yeah, they they're, they're dead, man. Only 57,000 people playing it. Yep. Dead game, man. Dead game. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, you either look at Fortnite or you're dead. Uh it's got fork knife, yes. Fork knife. Oh, a second. Someone said a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's this? Um But yeah. Someone uh would call it uh that's five times uh halo infinite's uh player but yes yes it is um let me see here yep yep exactly dead game all right let me look here uh st still skin skimming whoa Oh, jeez, I, uh, like, I was skimming down my list of things, and I forgot that the last time I played Daggerfall, there was a monk that was beating the crap out of a mecha robot. The, it, who, who was there for that? Who, who was there for, uh, the monk beating the crap out of the mecha robot? Because that, that, that was a good time. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Holy crap. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the monk did get uh, wrecked. It's true. It's true. Um, you're watching Godzilla XCOM? Um, I, I don't. I don't watch Godzilla movies while they're in theaters. I, I pick them up later. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I really enjoy some of the classics. It's just... Um, and they're very hit or miss, and I usually watch them ironically because I don't actually think they're very good. That, that's just me. Like, I, I, I laugh at him while half drunk, you know? Ahem. What are your thoughts on Stella Blade? That's what I've been asking people. No, no, no. Like, for the past uh, several days, I've been asking people what they think about Stella Blade because all people are talking about is Sexy Woman. And Sexy Woman makes me want to check out, um, you know, uh, fan art, not actually buy game. So I, I want, like... No, nobody has any opinions on the gameplay because it's a demo, right? So who gives a shit? Yeah, exactly. You you, you remember the Princess Peach character, right? We, we, we got that. What about it? Yeah. All right. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I never played um, 
the the the, the Call of Duty zombies thing. Right, ne never never touched the zo uh, like the zombie games I played were the Left 4 Dead one and two, and a little bit of Dead Island. Yes. Um. So yeah. So all I'm trying to say is that. Um, just uh what would you call it uh here's a you know here's a different desktop uh, background i got but again again like when when people talk about the uh like I, I get that sex sells and all but for me it doesn't like it's a curiosity that i'm willing to accept in games for example like oni chambra origin is a great game on its own but uh, the fact that there are ladies in bikinis in it is uh, just kind of icing on the cake. The cake has to be good first before I'll, you know, I'll consider in enjoying the uh, the icing, if you know what I mean. Ooh la la. Hmm. Okay. Now then, um. Hello. I am Hasur Zain Subani. I am Hasur Zain Subani. May you bless and be blessed. I do not wish to be rude, but if you have business, speak it, for I am at leisure and would prefer to be alone with my thoughts. You said expect more sexualized games as the pendulum swings back and forth, <laughs> purposefully making terrible characters in a game otherwise. It, yeah, I mean, but it really, uh, again, it just comes down to I'm not offended by sexy characters in video games. I'm just uh, not using that as a metric by which I'm going to buy a game. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I will accept um, characters I'm not attracted to ju just as fine as uh, a super sexy character. It's, it's neither a positive nor a negative for me. It just is. Because I, you know, don't need to be attracted to every character in every game. He said Nier did it right. Nier did a bait and switch, though. 9S was the main character of the game, and they put 2B front and center. That's the, the great... Like, Nier was a real bait and switch. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, tell me about yourself. I am a retired trader. I am well-traveled and a man of letters, but I am proud of my Ashlander birth and heritage. I see, I see. An Ashlander business? I see. You wish to learn of Ashlanders from me, and what is it that you wish to learn? They're gift-giving cu uh, uh, customs. A curious question. A gift is a sign of courtesy among strangers and affection among friends. Among strangers... A thoughtful gift is a sign that you are cautious and considerate and aware of the other's wants and needs. Such is particularly useful for traders and travelers. Among friends, it is a private thing and subtle with great risks. For the test of the gift is how well it is tailored to the receiver. True, true. B -b -b did you play as A2 also? Yes, you, you end up playing as A2... It switches back and forth between 9S and A2 at the very end of the game. Basically, Nier Automata has, uh, has kind of three layers, right? You have the 2B playthrough, then you have the 9S playthrough. And 9S is the real main character, right? Then afterward, the playthrough splits, 2, 2B leaves the game, and it's uh, just 9S and A2. And um, it's an interesting uh, setup. I enjoyed it very much. I find uh, I I found that uh, the game had a strong artistic message, and the game developer seems to be executing that uh, that humble uh, Japanese uh, mentality where they're like when they're they're told, "Oh, you, you're so great," they they they're kind of modest, right? They're they're expected to be modest, and so they say, no, "I didn't I didn't really plan anything," you know. Uh, and as a result, a lot of people who are predisposed to dislike the game will pull up that interview and say, look, proof, he didn't plan anything. Like, he, he, had, he had no artistic designs in this at all. When, in fact, it's, like, it's expected that someone who's being praised 
uh, turns down that praise, is essentially downplays it, right? It, that That's a cultural thing. And so any anyone who wants to do a, a takedown of Nier Automata will cite that interview and say, no, you see proof he did not have an artistic message behind it. Even though when you actually look at the material, it speaks to the human condition uh, profoundly. And so it's uh, very interesting to kind of see the discourse go back and forth. And when you, uh, you know, we, we talk about death of the author, right? Where we, we pretend like the author, like wh anything the author says and does, uh, th like they don't exist. We just look at the material itself and the material will speak for itself to us, the viewer, reader, or player. And um, it's, it's very interesting. So, like, to see the non-charitable people, the people who look at it as nihilistic, um, yeah, right, uh, ch childish nihilism, for example, they, they will look at the very surface level and uh, get very angry about it. Uh, you know, um, again, it's, it's kind of a back and forth. Now, um, I think the game is very flawed, but honestly, I have... I, outside of Tetris, I don't think there's a perfect game. So, you know, it's too uh, well put together for no artistic meaning. Uh, that 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 was uh, my thought as well. But uh, let me see. Um, we would also consider it a bit weird if a non-Japanese dev came out to brag um, that they're a genius artiste. You ever um. You ever seen those those games, the the the, the become human ga game? Uh, that that that's the dude. He's uh, he's really up his own ass. As as someone who is uh, up his own ass too, um, I I'm just saying like my my being derisive at him is, um, you know I I I know I I I I'm quite aware of where, where that uh, comes from. Hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I am uh, a mirror in some ways, yes. You said Pong is also a perfect game? Pong requires the input of another player to be good. The uh, Unfortunately, the AI controlling the other paddle in most iterations of Pong is easy to fake out. So like it needs to be a, like you said chess. I, I don't like chess. There's uh the, the meta was established a long time ago. And um, like, if I want to get into the competitive scene, I'd be against people who think like 30, 40 steps ahead. And I don't think any steps ahead. So you can see how this would be a problem. <laughs> mm. Anyway. Ahem. Let, me, let me see here. Yes. I just said uh, Tetris earlier. Yes. It's another reason why I, I don't really do RTS or strategy RPGs nearly as much. Y you thought I was smart? What's wrong with you? I keep saying I'm a big dum dum, but people don't believe me. Now then, let's see here. Um, I think we're good. Let's. Uh, what about Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle? How about that game? Anyway, so uh, thoughtful gift. I understand. You wish to give me a suitable gift, but you do not know me well enough to choose such a gift, or you cannot find or afford a gift you know to be suitable for me. Well, let us take your earnest thought and effort as a token of your gift. You have behaved courteously, and I am inclined to help you. What would you wish to know about the Ashlanders and the Nerevarine cult? First, tell me of the Ashlanders. There is too much to tell. Here, take these notes. I've written here what you should know about the Ashlanders and the Nerevarine cult. But most of all, if you are visiting a camp, there are things you should know about courtesy and challenges among the Ashlanders. And since you ask about the Nerevarine cult, 
Perhaps you'll be interested in my views on the Ashlanders and foreigners, because a guiding passion of the Nerevarine cult is their hatred of foreigners. I'm a foreigner. That's great. All right. Uh, you hated the Bugs Bunny games for the Game Boy. <laughs> yes, I, I understand. Absolutely. Um, geez. I was mostly joking about the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle game. Let me uh, see here. Uh, um, that a thing. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Had great flashbacks of playing. Donkey Kong Country 1. I played that on stream not too long ago. I really enjoyed it. Uh, took two separate streams to finish it, though. Uh, and I never found all the secret areas, either. Um, it was a damn shame. Let me uh, see here. Now I'm curious. So give, give me a second to look. Uh, um... I want to see how long ago that was. Uh, it was before Pal World, it looks like. Yeah. Hmm. It's not on my list here. This is... Ah, here we go. Okay. Four, four months ago. Yeah, I was playing it four months ago. Let's see here. Uh, b -b 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 you were here for Donkey Kong Country 1? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was, uh, I, I was playing that. Um, jeez, what's up with this monitor? Hold on, I gotta move the desktop around. There we go. That's better. That's where it was supposed to be. But yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was my, uh, Donkey Kong Country run as I was desperately trying to figure out, uh, shenanigans. Uh, it, it, it'd been years, but I gotta say, the ocean theme, like the underwater theme, is the best shit ever. Um... Alright. Uh, that that's like one of my favorite themes in all of uh uh all games there, yes. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, college. Oh boy. Oh oh boy, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um You said top uh, three underwater themes. Try top three uh, games. In, uh, sorry, uh, themes for video games in general. Like uh, Donkey Kong. Okay, I, I got. I gotta pull this up. Hold on. Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, I. Uh, I, I did a warehouse job at the same time I was uh, going to college. It was great. Um. That's why I learned, like, when people talk about problems at the Amazon warehouse, I'm thinking, that about tracks with uh, my experiences. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me see here. Yeah. Do, do, what do we got? That's, that, that should be it. Okay. wasn't really amazon i uh, uh you, you know you know how nepotism works uh, <laughs> uh completely uh no name place yeah
Uh, yeah, th that's uh, that's like one of my favorite video game uh, soundtracks in general. All right, let's get back to Morrowind. So let's see here. All right. Uh, so tell me about the Navarine cult. They worship the great Ashkan and Hortator, Nerevar Moon and Star who in ages past destroyed the evil, godless dwarves and banished the treacherous Dagoth Ur and his foul hosts beneath Red Mountain. The cult is of small consequence in Ashlander worship and only among the Urshilaku do its followers have any influence. Others Ashlander's tribes share the sentiments of the cult but regard the Nerevarin prophecies with suspicion and skepticism. Right. Okay, so, um... Talking about the Ushilaku. The Urshilaku are the Ashlanders of the northern Ashlands and the West Gash in the northwest of Vardenfell. Ashkan Sulmatul is their chief, a brave and respected war leader and warrior protector of the Nerevarine cult. The Urshilaku camp moves with the herds, but usually lies close to the Sea of Ghosts. The Urshilaku camp moves with the herds, but usually lies close to the Sea of Ghosts, north of the village of Margan on the northern coast of Vardenfell. Yeah, unethical AI. That'd be nice if TR uh, content could be uh, voiced through unethical AI. The future is all stealing and problems. Uh, for those who don't know, what we refer to as AI isn't actually artificially intelligent. It's more um, a, um, a pattern-seeking algorithm that is used almost exclusively for data laundering and theft. Um, plagiarism. It's uh, pretty cool. I, I, I like it very much. Um, Margan. Margan is a small village north of Aldrun. A road runs from Aldrun towards Nisus to the northwest and Margan to the north. Take the right branch at the fork to reach Margan. But it is a long and difficult road, and outlanders may get lost. The silt strider goes from Aldrun to Margan. It costs little, and you don't risk getting lost. Mm, I see. Tell me about your life as a trader. I am too old to travel now to risk the beasts and bitter blights of the wastes. Mm -hmm. Now I sit here warm and savor my imported Cyrodiilic brandy while my adventurous son, Hanat Zainsubani, assists me in my trade, seeking out sources of fine ebony and fetching them at fine prices. I see. Uh, tell me about your son. I wonder at my son. He has been so long away without a word to his father. Surely he wishes me to die of worry, so he may inherit this fine brandy. He has proposed to chart the rarely visited ancient underground complex at Mamea, west of Red Mountain. If you should chance to see him in your travels, chide him and tell him an old man longs for news of his son and heir. I see. Uh, do you know anything about the Nerevarine prophecies? I have heard it said that prophecies foretell the return of a reincarnated Nerevar. Who shall drive the foreigners from the Ashlands, and who shall cast down the false gods of the temple and restore the true worships of the ancestors? It is a dream that would appeal to every Ashlander, but it is thought but a silly ancient legend, and little more by many Ashlanders, myself included. I see. Um, Ashlander worship? All Ashlanders in a tribe, young and small, are born into the ancestor cult of their clan. The Nereverine cult is different, though. It is a very small cult, with only a few wise women with the gift of prophecy, and a few holy warrior heroes who guard and protect the seers. Sulmatul, Ashkan of the Urshilaku, is the warrior protector of the cult, and Nibani Maisa, also of the Urshilaku, is the oracle seer of the cult. I see. Um... Ashlanders and foreigners? Most Ashlanders wish all foreigners and their false gods could be driven from Morrowind. At very least, Ashlanders wish the foreign devils would leave them in peace. Ashlanders think it's shameful to attack unarmed persons, but they will kill without hesitation an armed person who offends them or their clan laws. Mm -hmm. No Ashlander is fool enough to make war against the Empire. However, if such a war might be won, Many Ashlanders might cheerfully give their lives to win such a war. I see. So, uh... You know, Vivek could probably raffle stomp these people uh, with his uh, uh, buoyant armagers. Probably. 
So, do you know anything about disturbing dreams? Perhaps it means nothing. It is peculiar, the tall figure in the golden mask. It puts me in mind of the golden helm of the Ordinator, but that does not seem to fit the spirit of the dream. My people take careful account of dreams, but only a wise woman can tease from them their meanings. You said, don't the Ashlanders and Dagothur want the same thing? I mean, yeah. The, um... The Ashlanders uh, want the um, mongrel dogs of the Empire expelled from Morrowind. However, it's important to understand that Dagothur also wants to spread his divine disease and join everyone in one mind to serve Lord Dagoth. So, um... Yeah, exactly. Every everyone would uh, burst into eldritch monstrosities and, and go serve Lord Dagoth if um, it, you know, if he were allowed to win. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, you know the way we talk about uh, ends justify the means. Um, I that 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 uh, that's usually the hallmark of an evil person. Just saying. Okay, so... I think that's about it. We've learned quite a bit. Uh, let me check this book. We got a book. Uh, where is it? Uh, prisoner checklist. No, it's from Halea. For Caius. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, ancient days, dark elves, uh, trim and temple, mysticism, never. This is all. This is exactly what we read before. We need to go back and see Caius now. Everyone likes us because we're a high rank in the tribunal temple, and uh, also the archmaster of House Redoran. So any connected factions just love the shit out of us. Plus, we got a high reputation. Like, our reputation's at 26. So, yeah. D -d 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 final stretch? No. No, no, no. We haven't even gotten to the Ashlanders yet. We, uh... We spent, uh, this entire game becoming, uh... Archmaster of House Redoran and, uh... High rank in the temple. We're gonna go back and see Caius now. Among other things. It's good stuff, really. Okay. Whew. You ever played Marwind under the influence? Uh, extremely drunk a couple times. Yes. Mostly, uh, Blood Moon, I think. Uh... Shoot, we're going north by accident. Gotta go south. I don't know why I went north. Oh, I was going around. Okay. Suddenly it makes sense. A little confused. Always forgetting how the roads work. It's fine, really. Wait, wait. Far now you're gonna get it? Oh, damn. That thing is strong. It was a Nyx Mastiff. And now we have rain. Hold on a second. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I want to check something. Hold on. Uh, so someone mentioned a thing, and I'm curious about that thing. Okay. Ahem. Yes. Douglas Goodall, game designer, writer for Morrowind, has frequent disagreements with his seniors at Bethesda. Quits. Posts on forums in character as Joe Basha the Khajiit. Returns 20 years later to make Morrowind mods, AF Fresh on Nexus. Yes, I actually mentioned that in my new player guide to Morrowind, if you check that out on my YouTube channel. Uh, I actually talk about it fresh. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Lockery finally, uh, found, uh, found it there, yeah. Yep, yep. Pretty good, pretty good. 
Okay. Let's get going. Heading on down. We gotta go meet with Caius in Balmora. Yeah. Is Caius a scum addict? Yes. Which has gotten him into some trouble, apparently. But um, he is smart. He has the smarts of a spy master, so he hasn't been taken advantage of. He rather he takes advantage of other people, and you know, uh, get gets what he was looking for. That is a vulnerability, though. I mean, if someone's a skooma addict, they don't leave their house very often. They have other people fetch the skooma for them, you know. A wealthy skooma addict uh, makes a lot of sense, you know, as an undercover. Uh, sorry, as, as a cover life, you know. He, he doesn't leave his house ever because he's, you know, always uh, stoned out of his mind as far as people are concerned. Du -du -du -du. He's in great shape. Yeah, he probably just does push-ups all day. Push-ups, sit-ups. You know? <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, can you widen Fargoth's thing? No. No. They're only... Well, mouse! Defeated. The rat is defeated. No, Fargoth's details are here. Uh, he has 199 short blades and 198 light armor. And he has 436 health. Yep. Yep, yep. That's right. Uh, Caius got recalled because of riots in the Imperial City. See, what's going on is people are, um are concerned that the Emperor's heirs aren't really the Emperor's heirs, but rather doppelgangers, Daedra in human form, that uh, were placed there by Jaeger Tharn. That, the, that people are concerned the Imperial line is dead. And if the Imperial line is dead, then, um, you know, who is the legitimate Emperor of Tamriel? It's a, uh, it's a big concern for um eh, for everybody you know let me see here trying to fix this okay meh good enough but yeah there are some um there are some pretty big uh, issues metaphysically speaking if uh, an illegitimate heir were to sit on the throne. The whole um, dragon fires being lit or oblivion invades thing is uh, a fiction from Elder Scrolls 4 and wasn't considered in the production of this game. So I, while I'm playing this game, I don't consider it. When I go to play oblivion, then I consider it. So similar to how uh, I, uh, when I'm playing Daggerfall, I don't consider the events of Marwyn because the warp in the West hasn't happened yet. Whoop. Run now. <laughs> but, um, politically speaking, the divine right to rule is um, a quality afforded one by their blood. And so, if one does, like, it, 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 that's the biggest scam ever, though, because scholars will tell you that the line of Tiber Septum was broken already. So, the current Uriel Septum Emperor doesn't actually have Tiber Septum's blood. And, uh, but that's something the general public doesn't understand, because when someone was declared heir... They were given legitimacy by that declaration, right? The uh, the nobles said it so, therefore it is so. And the faith of the people make it true. 
Yes. Up, 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 up. Anyway. It, like, if you look at the genetics, like, like the way human reproduction works, most of Europe shares um, a bloodline with the uh, first king of England. So, in theory, like, almost everyone in Europe is technically lesser royalty by blood. Nobody gives a shit about that because there are other rules in play that have been set up to, you know, keep the riffraff out of power, right? But, um, in theory, if blood was all that mattered, everyone's a fucking royal. Now, there are succession rules that say if someone isn't a part of a particular uh, dynasty or they are a they are uh, an illegitimate heir uh, that they are con like their children are considered naturally dead therefore they don't um, uh, like they may be alive but from the point of succession they are dead as in like they they are not considered and those are all arbitrary rules that were put in place by society um, as a part of the power structure that kept, uh, you know, the rabble out of, uh, uh, out of power. That, that's it. That, that's, that's all that, that they really cared about was, uh, uplifting the current, uh, administration and, you know, pushing down any would-be, uh, rivals. Yes. Hey Are there. Are you here to discuss your orders, or mm. is there something else you want? Thanks for your report. But keep Zainsubani's notes on the Ashlanders. You'll need them. I'm promoting you and sending you to the Urshilaku camp to speak with Sulmatul and Nibani Misa. But before you go, I think it may be time to tell you what's going on. Y he's going to tell me what's going on. Here we go. The Emperor and his advisors think you have the appearance of meeting the conditions of the Nereverine prophecies. That's why you were pulled out of prison on His Majesty's authority and sent to me. So you could satisfy the conditions of the Nereverine prophecies and become the Nereverine. Here, this is a decoded copy of the coded package you gave me when you arrived. Read it later. It should explain everything. Mm -hmm. As you'll see in the decoded message, the Emperor and his counselors say you have the appearance of satisfying the conditions of the prophecy. Do you really satisfy the prophecy? Are you really the prophesied Nereverine? At first, I thought we were just supposed to create a persuasive imposter. Now, I don't know what to think, but I'm sure of one thing. This is not just primitive superstition, and we will treat it seriously, just as His Majesty commands. As His Majesty commands? <laughs> um, so our perspective is we are a devout worshiper of the Tribunal Temple. This is technically heresy, but we need to see what direction this is going in. We need to follow this through and then uh, possibly nip it in the bud or uh, use it to defeat Dagoth-Ur. That, uh, that is something I would l very much like to do, considering uh, the lesser Dagoths gave us so much trouble when we went to Red Mountain before. I would like them very much dead um, and no longer a problem for me, if possible. Now then, let's see here. Uh, ahem. So, Zain Subani says Sulmatul and Nibani Misa at Urshilaku camp are the heads of the Nerevarine cult. So I'm sending you to speak with them. Tell them your story and have them test you against the Nerevarine prophecies. As heads of the Nerevarine cult, they can best judge whether you satisfy the prophecies. When you've mm -hmm. spoken with them, report back to me. Here's 200 drakes for expenses. And pick up essential supplies at Fort Moonmoth. Before you go to Urshilaku camp, see Samutis Vunis and Crulius Pontanian at Fort Moonmoth. I've asked them to put aside some potions and scrolls for you, courtesy of the Emperor. In particular, you'll want the cure potions. I hear the blight is very bad up north. And use the Divine Intervention scroll if you find you're in over your head. It will get you safe to an Imperial cult shrine where you can heal, refit, and try again. 
Oh. That's pretty amazing. I don't think I ever clicked essential supplies before. So I didn't realize how well they'd thought this through. That's pretty awesome. Tell me about Moonmoth. Mm, yeah. Moonmoth Fort is the Imperial Legion garrison mm -hmm. southeast of Balmora, just outside of town. Rad Hardheart is the knight in charge. Between the Imperial Legions and Imperial cult staff, they have about a dozen service providers out there. Okay. Um, that should just about do it. Uh, anything else you can tell me about the Navarine prophecies? The package you gave me described the prophecies' conditions, and you seem to match them. An orphan and outcast. A youth born on a certain day to uncertain parents. Standard vague prophecy stuff. I can see how it would be nice to have a Nerevarine in our pocket, just in case. But the Emperor and his advisors seem to think this prophecy is genuine. Whatever a genuine prophecy is. And we're going to take it seriously, aren't we? <laughs> yes, yes, I think we are. Very good. I have knowledge to share with you. Uh, I know you do. You always do. It's raining. It's also 9 p.m., so I'm going to go take a nap at, uh, let's see. I'm going to go to the temple. They, they've got beds for us there. Should be a okay. You ever played WoW from closed beta all the way up to Battle for Azeroth? I played WoW. I will never play WoW again, most likely. Um, I used to play in a guild with Blizzard employees, so when people started talking about the Blizzard scandals, I was like, uh oh, spaghettios. Because I knew um, people there. They don't work there anymore. They haven't worked there since long before the scandals, but, uh, you know. Alright, bed here. Up, 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 up. Now then. Did you see the FOMO armor set they are selling? I don't know anything about that. I've disconnected myself from uh, Blizzard. I will be playing... Warcraft 1 through 3, StarCraft 1 and its expansion, and Diablo 1 and 2. Those are the only Blizzard products I will be touching in the foreseeable future. I don't care about World of Warcraft, I don't care about Overwatch 2, and I don't care about Diablo 4. They can all go away. I won't be interfacing with their live service. <clears throat> In your dreams, a tall figure in a golden mask spoke to you. Lord Nerevar into a real. Uh, hi, Rendesia. Oh, goodness. It's, it's Resdine. Resdinia. Long forgotten. Forge anew. Um, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Um, one you betrayed was three times true. Lord Voiron Dagoth. Dagother. A stand fast, liegeman, faithful friend. Bid you climb Red Mountain, beneath Red Mountain once again. Break your bonds, shed cursed skin. Purge the Enwa from Morrowind. Oof, oofies. You said 60 gigs of mods? Sound, uh, yeah. I mean, I did a 700-hour uh, Skyrim playthrough with only 80 gigs of mods. So, like, it's possible. Um... Let me see here. What you're really asking is, uh, ahem. let me see. What you're really asking is, um, ahem. is Fargoth actually John Teeter? That's what it's you're asking. John Titer and Time Travel underscore Zero are pseudonyms used on internet forums between 2000 and 2001 by an individual claiming to be an American military time traveler from the year 2036, one, two, their posts discussed various aspects of time travel and described future calamitous events, including a global nuclear war. 
If you ever uh, see a Japanese cartoon called Steins Gate, that actually touched, like, John Teeter is one of the uh, main cast. Yeah, except uh, it's based on a real dude who claimed to be these things. Now, obviously, people are pretty sure he's bullshit, but, uh, you know, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Do, 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 do. Yeah. 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 Get, get, give me a second here. Um. Okay. I think we're good. Yep. Purge the Anwa from Moen. Eight hour nap. We need to eat and drink. Let's go. It's 5 a.m. Time to go visit the Ushulaku. Actually, we're going to the eight plates first to see if they have any food. They may not. I don't know. It's no big deal if they don't. Hello, Good do you day. have food? I'm Dolnea Ralal, mm -hmm. publican of the eight plates here in Balmora. Okay. We rent beds, and I have a limited selection of goods for barter. If you're new here, I can also tell you where to look for other services or a specific place nearby. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for someone in Three blessings, I may be able friend. to help. Mm -hmm. Three blessings. Do, 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 do. It doesn't synthesize. It's as, uh, these are pre-generated... Um... I feel as though I've just awakened from a dream. A terrible dream of the sixth house. These are pre-generated uh, voices using uh, unethical AI. The future is all theft and problems. Yes. Let me out. Okay. We're going to jump over the wall. Kind of dips down over here where we can do that. We're out. Let's go. Once we get far enough away from the city, uh, I suppose we need to eat, drink. Let's uh, eat real quick. We got ourselves uh, a couple cooked eggs. And then we can drink over here. My goodness. Do 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 do. Can you copyright a voice? People's voice performances are copyrighted. Um, and by replicating their voice performance, um, y using it to create something else, that is what is referred to as a derivative work. All right. She's trying to kill us. Very good. Do, 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 do. The thing is that we have a we have unethical AI doing what is referred to as data laundering. We don't have any laws governing this yet, so uh, people are kind of getting around existing copyright laws by claiming that uh, uh, they they have in fact created something brand new that merely approximates what was created before. Um, yep. Okay. If I created a unique performance that merely uh, used the same voice lines, then um, in theory it would be a unique performance that uh, I could claim as my own copyright. Um, and uh, the, the issue is that... The original was inputted into a machine. It wasn't, um, like, a human did not sit there and create a new performance. Rather, the old performance was put into a machine, and a pattern-seeking algorithm, may, uh, like, used it to create a derivative work. That's the, um, that's the crux of the issue, and where there's going to be, uh, court, uh, battles and litigation in the future. For now, I am all for this um, 
uh, to make my video game better. But uh, there will be problems in the future. No question about it. The future is theft and problems. And if um, by somewhat denouncing this and simultaneously using it makes me a hypocrite, well, you had to agree that I'm a hypocrite in order to even chat in this uh, channel here. So, you know, it's obvious. Hmm. Yes, whoever owns the performance can, in theory, sue. Technically, anyone can sue anybody for any reason. But that's a whole nother matter. Uh, whether or not the judge will hear the case is... No, no. A different matter. <laughs> okay. This way... Very often, other people sue each other in order to gamble on whether or not the judge will hear the case. Because if the judge can hear the case and the other person doesn't have the time or money to defend themselves, then they can very often get a judgment in their favor because of the other party's unwillingness to engage with the case. Like if they ignore the uh, summons and shit, right? They'll, they'll just have a judgment put against them. Let me see here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Cl Cliffy Racer! Oof, hello! Anyway. That's what Nintendo likes to do a lot. Nintendo likes to go after people who they know uh, uh, can't defend themselves. And they do that after whatever it is has been funded, so... Uh, they, they, they like to wait. They, they, they sit there and wait, and then they see, has money changed hands? Okay, we're going after that money. Because once, once money's changed hands, you can prove that uh, damages were done. Right? Like, you, you can assign a monetary value to the damages. And then, uh, if it, and then ask for punitive on top of that. And that's where Nintendo gets, uh, gets giving people, like, a you know, multi-million dollar uh, lawsuit. All right. They, they screwed over a lot of ROM hackers? Yes. Yes, they did. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people on the internet right now who are... Um, uh, um, here, hold on. Let, let me pull this up. So, uh... This is one of uh, my favorite memes. There we go. This describes a lot of Nintendo, Sony, and uh, Microsoft fans right here. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. These are the, like the biggest cultists uh, online uh, have attached their, their egos, their personal value, their identities to the products they consume. And those people are extremely problematic. But generally, they should be mocked as the consumers with multiple O's. Yes. Yes, uh, Microsoft is a uh, two... It's like... Uh, sorry, it's like a $1.4 trillion, something like that, last time I looked. It's crazy. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, PCMR? Lol. Lol. I mean, depends on if you're, um, you're worshipping Gabe Newell or not. That really, really depends. Are you? Ah. All right. Bye-bye, Paul. See you later. Goodbye. Bye, Paul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he came here not for a lecture? My God. That just shows someone who hasn't been to these streams before. You know what I mean? Like...
take a moment and and, uh, and look at that amazing comment right there. I came here to watch a game, not a lecture. I mean, come on now. Like, uh, wh where are we at right now? Hold on a second. Uh, like, we've been at, in this playthrough for seven days, 16 hours. Like, God. Th that's how you know someone's new and has been filtered. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a newbie right there. Okay. Tourists. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Holy crap. Comedy, pure and distilled comedy. <laughs> you, you have it as background? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness okay we got to go up to the ushalaku tribe now we're going that way i was like i, I want to say like i i do like a 10 hour stream and in my 10 hour streams like three or four hours are just just yapping Serious business. <laughs> oh boy. Let me say here. Mm hmm. It, it just it just works, right? Right. Okay. We go this way. It reminds me of that uh, that Robert Space Industries drone who uh, got angry at me for um, for laughing at all the bugs. Like I made a bug montage in Star Citizen uh, as like a first impressions video. And uh, they got angry. They were looking for serious reviews, not laughing, right? And, and so, uh, yeah, they left a scathing uh, comment about how uh, how I wasn't serious enough, and they won't be coming back. And that, that was comedy right there. They, they wanted their, their space game taken seriously. All right. Seriously, though. I, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't take the video game seriously enough, I know, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Now then. Yes. Well read, not smart. That's that's a good way to put it. <laughs> now then. Yeah, exactly. They wouldn't have been happy if I talked about how terribly the game ran either. That the answer would be, well, you don't have uh, a good enough PC for this tremendous uh, product. This is going to be the future of space games. <clears throat> now I have to look up when Star Citizen was funded. Hold on. Uh, when was Star Citizen kick-started? Uh, uh, Star Citizen Kickstarter, yes. Uh, when people play games to have fun, I know, right? All right, here we go, pulling it up right now. Star Citizen, okay, so. Star Citizen was funded for $2.1 million in April 2013. 2013, everybody. Hey, hey, get excited. Since then, it has become the most funded game ever. Um, how much has Star Citizen been funded? Uh, to, can, can someone... Uh, can someone determine... Like, 
I could have sworn it was around here somewhere like that. I, I, Robert Space Industries had a chart for this. And I cannot find it for the life of me. Uh, my The funding goals page is empty for me. He said 600 plus million. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I look at the whole thing. And I'm just like, what, what the hell? Yeah. It is the most funded game ever made. And it is older than uh, most of your nieces. Yes. Now, I will say, I will say that it is a video game now. Back when I initially played it and did my review, my quote unquote review video, it was actually just a, um, um, it was just a tech demo with um, some fancy ships you could get in and fly around. Now it's an actual video game. It's not a complete video game. It's nowhere near a complete video game. But it is a video game now. Which is fairly impressive. Considering they spent more money than any other game ever has. And still haven't released it yet, you know. Really makes you think. Okay, here we go. My goodness. We're traveling, though. We're going north. All right. I wonder if that other guy dropped off of a Josh Strife Hayes uh, Marwin stream. That guy uh, breaks into lectures about other things, too. LOL. I, I've seen a few of his uh, clips people have sent me. <laughs> Here we go. I like how our level difference has rendered us, like, uh, ren rendered the aggro radius very small for these guys. Fairly interesting. Yeah, Mark Hamill got paid well for his performance, I'm told. Not that it's being used at the moment. Hey, didn't they say that Squadron game was like in its final steps? It's going to be released any day now? Or any month now? A a any year now? That, that, not, not, the re not the real Star Citizen that everyone's paying for, but the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the Squadron, like, spin-off game that was originally going to be the Star Citizen, but then, you know. Uh, my goodness. All streamers lecture now, but a lot of them usually just say things you want to hear. <laughs> you should. They run. think you want to hear. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna offend a good portion of people just in general on principle. I, I enjoy poking the beehive. Okay. My, my current favorite thing to do is find perceived intolerance and then, um, and then poke at it. That's uh, that that's one of my favorite thing uh, pastimes to do, is is to uh, to poke at intolerance because it's, it's enjoyable. All right, we gotta go around the dragon. I don't wanna I don't fight the dragon right now, so we're going this way. Uh, yes. Do, 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 this way. Okay. Just letting our stamina regenerate while we uh. Yes. Dragon, dragon, rock the dragon. Dra dragon Ball Z. What? Don't know anything about that. Okay. Um. We gotta find that Ushulaku camp, yes. Oh no. I'm gonna say there. Oh no. Mm-hmm. I'm uh I'm a deist. Not not uh, not not Jewish or Christian, sorry. I'm one of those really insufferable people. Now you're going to get it. Okay. Moving along. Uh, 
Ushulaku camps up north. Got it. I know where it is now. Cool. We just keep going. Morrowind restoration only challenge video? No, I haven't seen that. I like mods that give restoration some form of attack potential. But, uh, yeah. I probably wouldn't do that. What's the hardest but still fun game I ever completed? Battletoads. Battletoads. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Apocalypse does that very well, yes. There are different mods. I came from, uh, like, oh, sorry. The first console I ever played uh, was the, um, what do you call it, uh, the Atari. But the first console I actually owned was the NES. Yes. Mm hmm. Anyway. Do, 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 do. The Hamburglar. I was thinking of a different man who said, oh, uh, I, I, too easy. Could you give me a dollar for a hamburger today, and I'll pay you on Tuesday? Different character completely. Alrighty then. Let's get going. We must travel. You betcha. Let me uh, check something really quick. Someone asked me a question. Uh, yes. Having NPCs kill the heart of Lorcan. Hey, at least the script that uh, kills you when um, uh, when you wield Sunder or Keening doesn't um, doesn't actually apply to um, NPCs. Yeah. At least not properly. Wonder if you install some uh, some patches that fix things. I wonder if that would uh, fix the script and make it kill the NPC. 100% <laughs> vanilla isn't my uh, thing anymore. So, uh, I will probably never play uh, vanilla Morrowind again. Now, no, no disrespect to those who... Uh, enjoy doing challenge runs on vanilla morrowind but uh you know i i left uh, vanilla uh behind years and years ago D did i play kenshi i played it on a friend's copy a little bit it was uh, a little too jank for me a little too oppressive um very sandboxy in a good way but i think i'd prefer mountain blade uh, for my sandboxy video game uh, may maybe kenshi 2 will be more up my alley Hey, Fargoth. What happened to your chest piece? It's gone. We gotta fix Fargoth's chest piece. Busted. Yep. Fargoth busted chest piece. Probably gonna also repair his uh, Fargothic short sword. Where is it? Where is the... F There's the Fargothic short sword. Okay. Jeez, you know what? I need to repair, like, a full set of everything. To be honest. Yeah. Let's do it. Mm hmm. Mountain Blade Warband is the, the game that I uh, would, would be playing. You said uh, Kenshi is Sadomasochism Simulator. Unless you, like, use a wiki and uh, try to kind of understand uh, how it works. Uh, you said, is Mountain Blade open world? No. It's, uh, it's very much a, um, what do you call it? It's a map, um, it, it's a map sim game that, uh, happens to have, uh, some real-time third-person action adventure elements to it. Yes. Okay. First things first, we need to go repair using these repair hammers. Yep. 
Repair all the things. And this is why our skill goes up. Hell yeah. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I, I picked up Bannerlord at some point, but I've been waiting for the modding community to kind of catch up to the level it was at with, um, what do you call it? Uh, the level it was at uh, in Warband, yes. Give me a sec. I'm over encumbered due to too much, uh, too many heavy weapons. I'll give them to Fargoth so that I can continue my adventures, question mark. Hmm. This is better. Yes. Do, 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 do. Let's go. I see a target over there. Hello there. Into the Guar field, yes. Trying. Am I not Oh god, I like I'm not even trying. I had no idea it'd turn out this way. Okay. Run while you can. Wait. I don't have yeah, there we go. Cool. Gee, she's trying to get to me. And she's not, not having a good time of it. Okay, you, you were talking about uh, um, uh, Guar Field. Let's see. I'm pretty sure we had one of those. We had a meme about into the Guar Field. Um, let me see here. What? Um, mm -hmm. Let me see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me, uh, see here. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, hold on a second. Um... I want to look up something. I'm, I'm interested in this. Uh, this is something you'll have to deal with is my insufferable need to interrupt and check things out. Give me a sec. It's, um... <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking up the uh, video here. Strat Edgy just put up a Batman video. And, uh, what do you call it? He made a post. I'm interested in that post. Give me a sec here. Um, yeah. Let me see. There, there is a particular post he made which falls in line with my ex experiences. And I'm trying to find it. Um... Okay, here we go. This, this is going to piss a lot of people off, I imagine. But, um, so, um, here we go. This is in line with what I know. There's this theory going around that companies like Sweet Baby got hired to increase the payouts from ESG. And there's some truth to that. But that decision is being made at the CEO level. Not at the worker level because the ESG payout goes directly to executives. So the ones pushing the agenda are the people who don't actually care about the agenda. While the people at the ground level who may actually care about diversity can only watch their opportunities to make interesting characters dry up before their eyes is money. Men take over more decision making in the company and potentially interesting ideas get ham mm -hmm. shoved into games without care or thought. I mean, you have to admit that the narrative being pushed by most YouTubers in the hate train is interesting. But you have to ask yourself. Would Strat be better off hawking conspiracies and assumption-laden rants that go along with those narratives? Or is he financially better off ranting about things he knows from his time spent working in the AAA games industry? I'd be better off going with the grift. Instead, this video will barely pay out because a good size of my audience will click out of the video the moment they hear something they don't agree with which will be before the first mid-roll ad plays. Mm -hmm. And while that's sad, 
I think it's important to address falsehoods rather than perpetuate them for profit. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I have spoken to several people currently in and uh, previously in the uh, AAA games industry. And uh, I can tell you that um, it, like, there's a lot of misinformation going around because of a conspiracy theory regarding uh, <clears throat> ESG. And uh, unfortunately, the average uh, game developer has absolutely no, uh, no control over this shit whatsoever. It doesn't go to them. Not even a bit. And uh, there are other considerations that happen. Mostly profit incentives. Uh, it, it Most of it isn't even ESG. That's the sad part. Like, it's focus-tested shovelware that, that gets shut, put into games. Um, the ESG stuff is just uh, the icing on the cake. And the cake would be bad regardless of that icing like pe people have uh uh have kind of what do you call it uh people have kind of looked at um have looked at bad games and they've looked at uh the pushing of diversity and inclusion and they've kind of they've noticed correlation and so they assume correlation is causation which is a logical fallacy Yep. It really sucks to be a uh, game dev in AAA these days. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, the, uh, the, the, the glamorous room is a meme. It's all lies. All, everything here is lies. Funko Pops I've been gifted. As well as uh, figurines I have got myself, such as uh, Barrow Kitir. But yes. My goodness. Anyway, cheers. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. It's a meme. It's a joke. Let me see here. Games made by devs who aren't qualified to be working for the studios. Well, that's just it. Qualified people, people who make a, a fair amount of money, or worse, passionate developers. This is the, the the worst thing is not whether a developer is qualified or not. That that's not it. Okay, it's not whether the developer is qualified or not. It's that the developer's decisions are being overruled at the executive level. And they are being forced to give up passion to keep their jobs. That's why when people go, well, Zerk should work at Bethesda, um, I'd, I'd still be beholden to Todd Howard and Emil Pagliarulo and stuff. It's like, well, you should be in charge. No, I shouldn't. I don't have executive experience. What's wrong with you? Um... <laughs> but it's just it comes down to uh, you do what your bosses tell you or you don't work anymore. That's the uh, the real issue is that um, you just you, like you do you do your job or you don't work anymore. I um, yeah, I was about to say something I was going to regret so. Uh, um, no, uh, it, it's, it really is, yeah, the issue is it's a job, correct. Absolutely correct. Sneak stuff into the game, that's fun. Billy, you remember, uh, that one, um, Atari game? Where the developer had to sneak his name into, like, a hidden room? Because they wouldn't credit developers for Atari games? Like, that, that was like an adventure, I think the game was actually called Adventure. Um, yeah. Don't like your job must suck, but you gotta pay the bills. Correct. Absolutely. That That's exactly what's happening in the games industry right now. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, Atari didn't, didn't allow developers to be credited. Everything was credited to Atari. 
uh, back in the uh, the good old days. And so, uh, yeah, there were hidden rooms with the names of developers because um, they they had no... Yeah, yeah, Adventure. That was the name of the game. That, that was a, a nuts time. I mean, it's still, like, to this day... Look at the Metroid Prime Remaster, for example. The Metroid Prime Remaster, I, I shit you not, does not credit the original developers, the people who made the gunplay and the levels and the bosses... It just says, it just has one line that says, special thanks to the original Metroid Prime team. And the rest of the credits are the remake staff. Or remaster staff, whatever. Point is, it is an abhorrent practice in the games industry. Um, that, um, you know, people aren't really credited for what they did. It's why it's been pulling teeth these last uh, few years to figure out who did what on Morrowind? Thankfully, Morrowind developers were before the oppressive non-disclosure agreements. These days, you can't get people to spill the beans on what they did in Oblivion, or in Skyrim, or in Fallout 4. Because they don't want to get blacklisted from the industry for being a non-disclosure agreement, you know, breaker. Um, e even if, like, after seven years, technically... Depending on what state they live in, they may be in the clear to speak because, you know, some states cap a non-disclosure agreement's duration. Uh, e even in that case, like, uh, if you say something you're not supposed to and it gets, gets uh, you know, heard through the industry, then um, that, that's it. You're, you're fucking done. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those situations where the people who really are... Um, you know, they want to work with Microsoft. They want to work with Bethesda again. Uh, they hold out that hope. They they won't break NDA, and so we don't get to hear who made what. We just have to rely on very inaccurate credits, which we found out were very inaccurate as far as, like, what a the actual roles entailed, what they actually did. No. Can't an NDA be void if utterly unreasonable? Who's going to fight it? See what I'm saying? Like, are, are you like you can still get blacklisted and not get hired, even if you were technically in the right? See what I'm saying? It's an unfortunate reality. No, nobody wants to deal with uh, someone who's going to, you know, talk about what they're not supposed to talk about. Anyway, let me see here. Anyway. Let me uh, see here. All right, let's go. We gotta kill this lady. Who's going? Ag! Ow! Ow! Oh. Oh. Yep. Oh. We got her. She's defeated. Imperial sorcerer. Crazy. Her sorcery is too much for me. Yes, you have to pay to fight it exactly. And in, in uh, most parts of the United States, you can get your payback when you win. Correct. Absolutely correct. You forgot I was playing Marwin? Lol. Lol. Oh, jeez. There's more of them. Hold on. Uh, more baddies. Fargoth, I need to talk to you about uh, loot. I have too much of it. I'm going to be over encumbered soon. I must give you a crossbow and a ripper. And a viper blade. Uh, that should do it. The demon mace, too. Damn, damn, damn. But, yeah. Putting things away. Anyway. All I'm saying is that... Uh, the games industry is kind of terrible at crediting their people. And it annoys me because I like to know who did what so I can kind of get a sense for why products turned out the way they did. Um, well, let, me, let me pull up a comment that got kind of buried in the filters because the person said stupid things. Let me, let me see here. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Okay, so first things first. I go over to... Uh, let's see. Comments here. Hold on. Um, yeah, it was, uh, hem, 
Holy hell, dude, you are the epitome of uh, toxic, nitpicking, internet uh, pendant with uh, that basement dwelling 4 chaners no, um, no life Redditors look up to. Instead of giving a half-assed apology, why don't you treat developers like human beings? No, that would be too hard. Um, how else would you be able to smugly uh, say you were regal wine tasting in the cloud district? Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Um, let me see. Nobody, not anyone at Bethesda or Zenimax owes you anything. Lore is overrated, always will be. Um, that, yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, so. Uh, that that guy got put into the uh, the filters. Like no one else can see his comment because that that's just what happens to people who trigger certain words. Um, it, you know they 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 get a little too enthusiastic, say things that uh, YouTube doesn't like, and so they live in the filter where they can only see their own comment and no one else can see it. Right? That that happens all the time to people. Um, anyway. Uh, this particular individual um, is just wants you to consume product and doesn't want you to try to deconstruct why a product turned out the way it did, nor criticize, um, like, try, try to kind of pick apart which person caused um, th this particular situation to be the way it was. Just consume product, be happy about product, and under no circumstances, criticize product. If you don't like the product, then just ignore product, right? That's that's what he that's what this particular individual was saying. And um Yeah. But please talk about games. No, not like that. Pretty much. Um Exactly, exactly. I'm trying to uh, try to figure out I'm trying to figure out why a particular game turned out not the way I liked, and then I talk about how the game is not the way I liked. And uh, unfortunately, um, humans made those games. But, you know, they, they said, how about treating the developers like human beings? I'm trying to do that, right? Humans have flaws. Humans make mistakes. Humans organize incorrectly and produce suboptimal results. And I'm trying to determine which humans are responsible for producing those suboptimal results and then pointing it out as we all, you know, critique artwork, right? Well, when art is made by multiple people, rather than exalting that art or ignoring that art, we deconstruct that art and try to figure out which artist on the team, and I use the term artist liberally to you know apply to writers and designers everybody in the process right so um like who in the process is uh, responsible and if i can't do that then it, then you know it, that takes the fun out of it and so um it, it's funny how people take um criticism of other people Personally, like they, they've internalized it. Like, I criticize a product and people in the production of that product. And as a result, people take it, you know, they, they believe that I'm attacking them or they, they feel uh, they feel for those people when I, I'm, I'm just really looking at the process, you know. You uh, need people like that to defend you too, yes. Being critical is a good thing. Correct. Absolutely correct. Anyway. Um, I think that it's um, important to deconstruct uh, why a thing, you know, isn't to your liking. But at the end of the day, outside of my color commentary, there is no force and effect to my videos, right? I may complain about something. I may explain that it wasn't Lawrence Schick's fault. And it was actually these other developers' faults. 
specifically the lead developer and the people under them who did the level design, who also did the quest design. And so, by, um, by doing that, we can not only set our expectations, but we can kind of deconstruct the individual pieces, connect who made what, and uh, that can be not necessarily a guidebook, but some thoughtful consideration for other people who want to make similar products, right? Hey, this is a pitfall that this company fell. Um, uh, th this is a um, this is a pitfall that um, that this company fell for. You in in your future dealings don't fall for this uh, pit. D don't uh, you know? Don't make the same mistakes. And so, in that situation, I think it's very important. To deconstruct who made what. And, you know, uh, obviously, um, we can't control who does what in, for, in terms of art. But we can explain why we don't like something. And then... Um, uh, you, you know, just kind of lay it on the table as a... Uh, as you know my personal opinion but um there are people who take issue with that that any attack on the um any attack on the work or any kind of attempt to lay blame for flaws in the work on individuals that is something that uh hurts people like individuals who take this personally that they, you know, that that person literally said, "Why don't you try treating developers as human beings?" And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to divorce them from the monolith that is the company, right? That's uh, something that people don't quite get. Yes, it's interesting. That's all I got to say. And yeah, I, I am sometimes kind of mean. It's true. I could I could stand to be nicer in general, but it's um. Uh, it was called. Uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Let's get going. I'm distracted. Here we go. She has me. Does she? I don't have enough uh, magicka to summon a golden saint right now. She keeps trying to cast things at me. Crazy. This is me being mean. Well, I mean, my tone is generally un... My tone typically lacks empathy, right? But that's because I'm trying to dispassionately talk about the product. And uh, I, I think that comes through for people who um, who are overly emotional, a dispassionate um, deconstruction would uh, come off as hateful because they are an empathetic person, right? They, they want to see the best in people and they want to look at things from that developer's perspective and Imagine if you were saying mean things about these other people. Well, um, uh, that they imagine me saying mean things about them, or they, they imagine themselves in that position. See what I'm saying? So, in that situation, an empathetic person is going to see a dispassionate... Um, um, a, a, a dispassionate deconstruction as hate it's just it, it it is simply a result of um people having different perspectives i overwhelmingly that there are some things i'm empathetic about but i like to think i'm sympathetic in many situations there's a difference between sympathy and empathy and people confuse the two I, there are some things I am truly empathetic about, but overwhelmingly, I like to think I'm a sympathetic person. Hmm. 
It's just that um, I compartmentalize a lot. Like, move my personal opinion of something into the corner for a moment while I discuss it from a different person's perspective. When I do that, it tends to piss people off. Because they think I'm arguing in favor... Of, when I'm explaining someone else's viewpoint, they think I'm arguing in favor of their viewpoint. When in fact, I'm just stating it so that I can then approach it from my point of view and kind of explain how we can never... Like, the two of us can never come to terms. And this, um, this fucks with people when I compartmentalize like that. Because they want a consistent point of view instead of a deconstruction. I'll melt your flesh. Whoop. I'll melt your flesh. He'll melt my flesh. Whoa, he keeps trying to do on touch spells. Yep. Do -do 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 -do. Anyway. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. He's running away. He ran away for a second. He was scared. It was funny. Okay. Come on, consistency to high fiber diet. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. It's, uh... I've said this before, but my personality actually creates problems just enjoying things for what they are. I, like, the more I like something, the more I want to deconstruct it. And that, uh, that pisses people off because they, uh, they look at that deconstruction and they believe it's synonymous with hatred. When, in fact, it's usually indifference because I come at it from an indifferent viewpoint. What do you mean, deconstruct it? Pick it apart. Try to figure out what makes it tick. Yes. Do, 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 do. We, gotta, we gotta kill one of the, this Kwama Forge. I'm letting my stamina regenerate for a second. Yes. But, like, I love Skyrim. I, I don't know, like, th this is something that people have a real big, uh, have a... Sorry, a lot of people have trouble understanding. I think the story of Skyrim is terrible, and the characters are surface level. But sitting down to play the sandbox of Skyrim, especially with mods, is a very fun experience. Like I, I'm able to, I'm able to uh, relax. And in more modern iterations of, uh, you know, the mod loadouts, I'm able to turn it into a full-on collectathon, right? I'm able, like, I'm able to sit there and enjoy the game. But I will stop and I will criticize it. And that pisses people off. Throw on sex mods, lol. I uh, I used the Serana sex mod in the last one. It was really funny. Um, she said she does not consent to any mind-altering spells or potions. By the way, um, she said that in a uh, in, in the in the Serana mod. Yes. Do, 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 do. Exactly. I'm a big meanie. Precisely. Precisely. Yep. But yeah, people will look at. Um, my dislike for Skyrim's storytelling as um, a universal hatred of the product when in fact I played for 700 hours in my uh, cell reel run and enjoyed the hell out of it and uh, if I hated the game that wouldn't have happened but there are people who absolutely cannot tolerate any form of deconstruction. I mean, I have tons of criticism about Final Fantasy XIV, but, like, I'm obsessed with that game. <laughs> I did a four-hour new player guide on it on my YouTube channel because I'm so obsessed with it. All right. 
one can challenge me. Okay. I met Selk. I met Selk was pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Emmett Selk had a really cool line. He said, Moral relativism, um, uh, I don't consider you for truly alive, ergo, I would not be guilty of your murder should I kill you. V very special guy. Very, very, but Emmett Selk wasn't all of it. The, the, the experience... Um, the, uh, the the overall Final Fantasy XIV experience, the dungeons, the uh, the raids, the um, the presentation of fourteen engenders positivity. Uh, hello, so sir. What do you want of me, Outlander? You're a shock herder. Okay. Yes. Anyway, it's um. Yeah, he said uh, you're gonna do a pacifist run. Thoughts on viability? You can uh, absolutely use illusion to calm an NPC long enough to um, uh, to interact with them and or walk past them. Yeah, if you have a large enough magicka pool, uh, illusion should work. Um, you will need to train it up probably, but you can between calm animal and calm human. The only person you're going to have to deal with are like Dwemer. Hey, Strad, I was, um, I, I actually just played that, uh, that there clip of yours. Uh, this one here. I said it fell in line with what I knew personally to be true. Yeah. I, I, I said that. Yep. Um. <clears throat> but, uh, I had the text-to-speech robot read it out and everything. Okay. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so um No one can challenge me. Yeah, I like I've done a um I've done a seven hundred hour Skyrim run, you know, with Cellrail. Like it's up on the YouTube channel under the video section. I was por like porting them over from Twitch. Anyway, um, people confuse my criticisms of the story with a hatred of the game, and it's like, the experience of the game is a very zen-like thing, where you roam the sandbox collecting things, fighting monsters, uh, and generally enjoying adventure. But I divorce that from... How I view the um, the actual storytelling, which I consider to be bad, right? And uh, there are people who cannot accept criticism of a product with existing concurrently with enjoyment of that product. Like, I would not have played it for 700 hours had I not enjoyed it. It's that simple. Okay, that is a wyvern. Yeah. that Wyverns are fireball-throwing cliff racers added by Morrowind Advanced. Uh, that is a mod made by um, Worm God, one of the um, uh, Morrowind developers. Yes. All right, Flame Astronaut first. Frost Astronaut next. Oh, jeez, I'm out of uh, mana. One of us will die yeah, this thing is uh, up there. Yep. You should okay, so. Um, I need to use mana. Uh, but yeah, I have a ton of criticisms of Final Fantasy XIV as well. Magic. Yeah. Um, you can criticize the shit out of something you love because uh, that love helps you see it with clear eyes. Yes. And you want to see its flaws corrected. Yep. I look at it more. Um, unfortunately, the flaws probably will never be able to be corrected. However, I look at the possibility of sequels. Probably not. Uh, or, better yet, spiritual successors. 
or even just like tertiary products like some like a, an indie developer is watching the video for inspiration right and they think about it for a moment and they can take those concepts and um and run with them and if that helps anyone to get any inspiration i consider it a success several um indie developers have told me you know the the videos have helped give them perspective on their favorite things and you know that that's um that's what they uh uh what do you call it uh that, that that's the value they found in the video and to me i think that that's freaking awesome because i'm just rambling to ramble you know and i understand like to an unabashed fan someone who cannot um cannot understand my my criticism it would come off as hatred there's no question about it yep okay let me go ahead and use this here i'm gonna go ahead and go after i'm gonna use uh vivex feast no that's spell absorption i need i need something i tap energy yeah i just need to get this you don't think that Baldur's Gate 3 can be replicated without a seven-year dev cycle? I think that Baldur's Gate 3 is really interesting because we're never going to see another one of it. Um, like, they looked at, like, Wizards of the Coast, apparently, this is what I'm told, uh, you know, a grain of salt, a barrel of salt. Uh, yeah, a barrel of salt. Um, I'm told that Wizards of the Coast, uh, looking at the success of Baldur's Gate, wanted to renegotiate uh the license for future titles you know like dlcs or uh you know uh what do you call it um and what do you call it? any sequels right because like baldur's gate 3 isn't a wizards of the coast publishing getting money right rather larian purchased the license Okay, and so Larian reaps the profits having purchased the license. Apparently, Wizards slash Hasbro, whatever the fuck it's called, I don't remember the uh, the parent company. They, they apparently wanted a larger cut slash um, upfront fees. Something was um, uh, apparently. Um, not equal so yes the the intellectual property rights holder they looked at it and they said we're gonna we're gonna do our own stories now thank you that that's really what it came down to and you said the dev team didn't have their heart into it anymore oh well, yeah i mean imagine like i'm told at least that chapter three is really rushed you said no one will ever uh, license D&D ever again the way Hasbro's doing it. I think that if D&D profits go down, they, they'll probably license, they'll, they'll probably, uh, give the license away, um, for, for less, I imagine. But yeah, I, I, like, I personally, and this is something that pisses people off because there's a lot of Magic the Gathering fans out there, but I refuse to give, uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, money willingly without at least trying to mitigate it. In other words, uh, I will buy products used. I will go to the gray market for keys. I will do basically anything I can to avoid paying Wizards of the Coast because of their actions. And, uh, but yeah, fans don't like that. But that's just the way it is. Like, I won't be interfacing with Magic the Gathering or um, any of their other products unless it's a, a used product that is not coming from Wizards. Or, uh, again, I'm, like, getting a, a key on a key site or something. Run while you I, um, I refuse to give them now money. Now, thankfully, Baldur's Gate 3 is Larian. Larian licensed it. You know, Larian is not planning on giving them money in the future. You can't escape me, Fargot says. Jeez, how much to get a Storm Astronaut? That's 50 mana? Okay, so I need another 20 points of mana. Oh, good, good. My Astronauts killed it. 
I, I don't have ranged options on this character. I have Conjuration, and I have a big clunky mace. So I have to summon ranged units to kill a uh, to kill that wyvern. Because it's a it is a ranged unit. Crazy shit, right? But yeah, yeah. Um it honestly critical role is what made D and D what it is right now. There's no question about it. Yeah. Like, if Critical Role hadn't been successful and other D&D &D shows hadn't been successful, uh, there would be no, um, like, D&D like, &D wouldn't be in the state it's in right now. Let's put it like that. It would probably be on its way to being abandoned already. Not to say that that isn't on the horizon considering what they tried to do with one D&D. For those who don't know, uh, Wizards had this idea that they were going to turn D&D &D into an online platform and, like, nickel and dime you for DLC. Um, that was their original one D&D concept. And it got thoroughly rejected by, um, by the, the, the test community that they had, uh, you know, run it by, the, the focus groups and whatnot, you know? Um everyone rejected the one DD &D concept that they had uh, created but yeah they, they they wanted to create this uh, always online um, uh, digital only D, D future where everyone uh, logged into their website to play D, &D and uh, you could get uh, access to other races and, and stuff um you know the details by um paying for the dlc basically that, that's what they tried to do it, and um yeah it, it flopped hard it, it that that they were originally like shopping that to um to their testing groups around the same time that they were trying to change the open games license Remember, remember that, that huge uh, scandal when they tried to change their open games license? That was that was the same time they were trying to uh, shop uh, one D&D &D to, uh, uh, to their thing. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, bu -bu 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 Let me see. Yeah, that open games license caused a lot of people to jump ship to other systems. Uh, have you seen the new robot units in Helldivers 2? No, I have not. Um, I uh, played Helldivers 2 briefly on the Terminants like two days ago. And I really enjoyed it. I really did. Um, but that was a, hey, I can't sleep and I need to, I need to just uh, waste some time. And so I did like three missions let me see which tabletop has the best rule set i'm partial to open legend which is uh setting agnostic meaning you can put it anywhere um yeah let me see here but um it really depends on uh personal taste there is no best tabletop uh, rule set, right? That's, uh... It, it, like... At the end of the day, tabletop rule sets are mostly... Mostly combat systems. And you're expected to then fill, fill in the space between combat with your own role play. Grups is a good system. Uh, I, I enjoy Pathfinder 2. Um... But it comes down to personal preference and what you really want to do with it. Each is like... I mean, for example, you could use a rubber mallet as a hammer. But a rubber mallet's going to be better at some activities than a, than a steel hammer is. Like, they're, they're more... Su uh, you, you, could, you can use them interchangeably very often. But um, one is more suited to one activity than another. And rule systems are similar in that regard. 
Anyway. Uh, camp time. But, 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 hello. There's someone in the background there. Talk, you come to talk, Outlander? You're an Outlander if you wish to talk above the Nerevarine prophecies. If you're polite and well-mannered, uh, why should we talk to you about this? Uh, what does an Outlander have to say about the Ushulaku of the Nerevarine prophecy? Um, I, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I wish to speak to Sul Matul. I fulfill the prophecies. Uh, ahem. I do not believe what I am hearing. You think you're the Navarine and wish to speak to them? Uh, you do not look like the Navarine, but you do not speak like a fool uh, or a madman. This is a puzzle. Go speak with uh, Zabramond in his yurt. He is a Galakon, and uh, you may enter the Ashkhan's yurt and speak is with there him. Is there tool? Okay. Galakon, where is he? Is there something? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is Zamasu's yurt. Yes, uh, Outlander. What do you want? I wish to talk, yes. Of the Navarine prophecies. I fulfill them. Uh, if Zebamond gives permission. Got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ashcon. Damn! How did you get in here? Leave at once. Or I will kill you myself. How did you get in here? Leave at once, or I will kill you myself. Damn. That guy's angry. Hello there. Talk, Outlander. Speak with respect, and I will listen. You say, uh... Let's see. Rochester Swift asks if Strat has spent much time doing tabletop games. That That's an interesting uh, question. Actually, I believe he has a... Uh, um, a show on Twitch where he plays D and D. I think uh, if he's still around, he might want to plug that, and I, I give my a okay to do that. If if you want to see him uh, playing the D and D, yep. Mm. Anyway, um, he might have uh, gone off to go check something else out. That that usually happens, back and forth. There we go. You have a third channel to stream D and D. Yeah, Strat, why don't you uh, why don't you link your um, that channel that you play D and D on here in the chat so people can uh, check it out later? Yeah, that'd be good. I, I I gave you the little wrench so that the bot won't time you out for doing that. Unlike the other peasants who uh, must be afraid. There we go. Cool. Sulmatul will not talk to you. Nibani Misa will not talk to you. You have no standing among us, Outlander. Uh, talk about the Neverine, uh, thoughtful gift. It is our custom. Among strangers, we honor this custom with gold. I see. But well, what if talk I tell Outlander. you that it Speak just works? Respect, and I will listen. Yes, what What if? What if it just, I'm going to cast it just works. There we go. Uh, that should do it. Talk, Outlander. Speak with respect and I will listen. You have no standing among us, Outlander. I understand, I understand. But you speak well and with respect. So I will explain. It is against our customs that an outlander should speak to an Ashkan or wise woman. I'll tell you also that Sulmatul has no love for outlanders. Well, the Nerevarine prophecies? The Nerevarine prophecies are not for outlanders. Why should Sulmatul and Nibani Misa speak to you about these things? Who are you that we should trust you? All right, I'm going to tell all I've learned of the Sixth House in the Nerevarine and humbly ask. Hmm. These are not simple matters. You know a great deal more than I would have thought, and some of what you say is news to me. I believe you should speak to Sulmatul. Perhaps he will be angry with me, but I think I can bear that. Go to the Ashkan's yurt and speak with Sulmatul. Ask him your questions and tell him I have sent you. Yeah, yeah, Strat. This is unethical AI. The future is all theft and problems. But for mod purposes, it is really cool. All right, let's go. <clears throat> Here we go. Yes, Outland. Yes. You wish to talk with me about the Nerevarine prophecies? Go ahead. I am very curious. You think you fulfill the Nerevarine prophecies? You wish to be tested to see if you are the Nerevarine? No Outlander may join the Nerevarine cult. 
If you were a clan friend, an adopted member of the Ashlander tribes, then perhaps. I have an initiation rite in mind. If you pass this rite, I will adopt you as a clan friend of the Ashlanders, and then I will submit you to Nibani Misa, our wise woman, who is skilled in oracles and mysteries, and who will test you against the prophecies. I want to do this initiation right, and I will in a few minutes. Thank you all for watching. It's been two and a half hours. I know we spent, like, at least half of that yapping about random shit. I plan to yap about more random shit later. But, uh, I'll see you all in about five, ten minutes. Probably closer to five. I just need to stretch my legs. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll be playing this all day. There's no question about it. Be right back. All right, I'm back. Let's uh, have a look. See. So, uh, him. If I want to prove that I'm Lord Narevar Reborn, which you know our character is a devout member of the Tribunal Temple, so technically this is heresy. We're trying to get to the bottom of the Imperial plots, and if going along with this and claiming we are the Nevering, we can always recant that later. You know. Uh, but for now, let's uh, let's pretend that we are uh, to try to figure out what these Ashlanders are thinking. So we'll go through their initiation rite. To be adopted into the tribe, you must undergo a harrowing. 
In a harrowing, you will be judged by the spirits and ancestors to see if you are worthy. Go to the Urshilaku burial caverns and fetch me Sulsenapul's bone biter bow. Sulsenapul was my father, and his spirit guards his bone mold long bow deep in the burial caverns. Return to me with this bow, and I will adopt you into the Ashlander tribes as a clan friend. The burial caverns lie to the south-southeast of the camp, a north-facing door in a little hill halfway between us and the slopes of Red Mountain. Go north from the camp to the water, then turn east. At a rock cairn on the beach, turn and head straight south until you find the door. The spirits of our ancestors guard the caverns. They will attack and will kill you if they can. Force your way past them or evade them. Get the bow and return to prove your worthiness. Cool. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. those uh, orders there just in case. Because alas, as nice as this has been, I expect that uh, we will have trouble. Let's see. So, uh, uh, south, southeast, eh? So, go north from the camp to the water, turn east, and then head straight south until I find the door. Okay, let's go do that. We're gonna perform a harrowing. We're also gonna touch fire. That, that's nice. I, I got burnt. Almost like, like just, just barely passing over the fire. Truly, truly. Okay. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, did I catch the Linux vulnerability? Microsoft thought they were being clever, calling that out. But yes, yeah, so open source software is uh, very good. Correct. All right. My favorite part is when directions get added to the journal incorrectly. That happens with the Imperial Cult. Todd Howard's doing, by the way. Um, and not, not joking about that part. Todd Howard worked on that particular part of the Imperial Cult. It turned out uh, some... Uh, um, I would call it some Marwin developers confirmed it. Oof. Anyway... Let me see... Yeah. Okay. So, turn east at the rock cairn on the beach. Uh, head straight south. Rock cairn on the beach. Well, Strat, here's the thing. So, if you really want to know, like, the worst, um... What do you call it? Um, the worst thing that Todd Howard did in Morrowind, it's actually the first uh, quest of the uh, Imperial Legion where you go to find out, like, you, you have to solve a mystery about who killed this particular person or what happened to this particular person, right? You go into a room and his ghost goes, The orc in the other room killed me! That's a mystery. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh ahem. Yeah, yeah. Run while you can. That is uh 100% a Todd Howard quest. The later stuff with the Cult of Talos, that was from another developer's notes that Todd Howard just finished. Yes. But um uh, there's a reason why uh, by Oblivion, uh, midway through Oblivion, he wasn't allowed to work on anything directly anymore. I wasn't just, uh, oh, hey, hoo, hoo, uh, y you know, like he, he's been promoted above that. It's more, um, you're a good administrator, sir, but you're not allowed to work directly on anything anymore. Yeah. And uh, Todd Howard actually revealed that in interviews. That he, he wasn't allowed to code or script or do anything directly anymore. That, uh, you know, uh, it's something that uh, people didn't quite realize. That uh, it, it turns out he's not very good hands on, yeah. The Todd Howard voice demo in Oblivion was amazing, yes. It was, it was good, uh, good memes. Is that a rock cairn? Do they mean this? 
Um, do they mean something further over? Is this the rock cairn? I'm obviously quite stupid. And uh, I could get lost for days on this. Let's let's find out what the... the this, uh, hmm... The Ushulaku, Velik Dagger, Shao Goroth's quest. When did I get Shao Goroth? Oh, yeah, I, I was under Vivek. Oh. Ushulalu. I, I, I don't, I'm not part of House Lalu, so I'm confused as to how that would work. Uh, let me see here. Yep. Uh, okay, so, as I understand this, it would be right next to a uh, stronghold. Hmm. Okay. I kind of get where I'm supposed to go. Kind of, sort of. Maybe. Let's head south until we find the fortress. If we find the fortress or a Dwemer ruin, we know where we're going. If we don't find those things, we're completely off base. I found the Dwemer ruin. Uh, so there should be a fortress to the side. Damn it, I hit Fargoth by accident. Don't hit Fargoth too much. Yes. Mm. It's a weird aside, but of all the features YouTube could add, the ability to post gifts as comments... I um I used to stream on a platform called Hitbox. Uh, I started on Twitch. Twitch was kind of twitchy, so I went over to Hitbox. And for like a year and a half, Twi Hitbox was good before they uh, gutted all the uh, United States servers, merged it with a um, uh, what do you call it a uh, a French service called Abzu, and turned it into something called Smashcast, which nobody used, and it it died. So, um, but point is, Hitbox had the ability to post, like, images in chat. And I found that really quickly, mm, you can't trust people with that ability. You know, they, they would, uh, they would post obscene and profane things. So, what I did was I created a curated list of things and gave a bot the permission to post, uh, images. And then I, I basically, um... I, I, gave, I had like a giant list of exclamation point commands that were tied to an approved list of, um, of images. And um, I found that worked out pretty damn well. Um, like I, basically a list of about 50 approved images and uh, people could uh, post those with their, their quote unquote channel points that they accrued by watching. So people couldn't spam images. They would... Uh, uh, they would basically uh, earn points by participating in chat and then uh, be able to spend those points um, posting images, basically. And that was kind of like a currency that rewarded being active in the channel. You said, so Twitch? Yes, but uh, it was in the chat, not on the stream. So I could still curate, you know, what was on the stream. Yes. Okay. Mm don't I want to be popular thing? I don't even know what that is, so I'm going to shrug. But, uh, okay, there's the Dwemer Ruin, and there's the Fortress. So the Ushulaku Cavern should be in the middle here somewhere. If I uh, zoom out, whoops, over here, okay. Uh, that is a Ashkin Hut. That's Kogarun. Kogarun's the biggest dungeon in the game. It's got to be somewhere in this region here. Probably a little more north. I gotta uncover stuff. People, uh, mention other channels all the time. I, uh, think I know, like, Two VTubers and Asmund Gold. Uh, that's about it. This is going to be fun. Um, I think I follow like a hundred YouTube channels, something like that. But 
I don't watch very often. Let me, let me see here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I, I did watch, like, the, the opening part of uh, Strat Edgy's Batman thing, though. I had to... I had to kind of ditch when it came to the story part because, um, you know, I was ready to stream. But um, the the opening part, the common criticism section, was really enlightening. Like I, I thought, I thought about many similar things myself. Okay, point is, I recommend the video based on the beginning that I saw. Oof, let me see here. Okay, uh, that should do it. What else we got? Um, yeah, I'm looking at all these uh, tons and tons of uh, channels uh, that I am subscribed to for various reasons. Um, it was uh, cathodic to write. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm sure it was. Um, yes see here um okay I, I think i saw two channels I'm, I'm trying to go down those lists like the overwhelming majority of channels that i'm subscribed to have basically fallen out of uh um of production it's a damn shame uh, youtube has been uh, stabbing them all with uh Changes to the algorithm. Let me see here. I, I'm, I'm skimming down a list. And, uh... Yeah, it's kind of nuts. Just how many people... I, I think that, uh... Starfield did just as much damage... As YouTube did. As far as, uh... Having people, like... Drop off of, um, what do you call it, of U YouTube there, within the general, you know, space here, I'm looking at it going, oh, wow, let me, uh, see, I could have sworn I missed something, and, uh, Drew... Uh, yeah, it, it looks like I'm, yeah, definitely subscribed to Drew Moria, who's, uh, you know, a former Fudge Muppet. Definitely, uh, uh, passionate about his video games, and that's cool. Um, let me see here. Mm-hmm. Visit a tavern to add to the atmosphere. No, I'm looking for a very particular channel. I'm skimming down the list, you know, uh, lots of memory. Could have sworn that I was subscribed to a different channel that I can't find anymore, which is sad. Very, very sad. Because I wanted to talk about it. Oh, well, I'm gonna just have to shrug and go, maybe next time. Ha, ha, ha. No, um... Okay. Well, I was going to say that uh, an YouTube channel that I poked at a couple times uh, recently was uh, Angelica Tosh, uh, who uh, apparently she runs a uh, Spanish-speaking YouTube channel as her main, and then she does, uh, like, Elder Scrolls videos in English. I was looking for a different one. Um, couldn't... Uh, couldn't find it, though. Un unfortunate. But yeah, I, I skimmed at uh, a couple other channels. And, um... I shit you not, like, most of these stopped posting three or four years ago. That's really sad. Like, really, really sad. Mm-hmm. Warlocker? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Warlocker. That guy has done a lot of uh, cool stuff. But yeah, I'm just gonna have to shrug there. Uh, <laughs> Nigerian, you say? Okay. 
Wish I could actually just get a simple list of things, but, uh, yeah. Anyway. I have to figure out where the hell the, uh, entrance to this place is. I'm looking for a, uh, a thingamabobber. Yes. But no, he's uh, talked about a fair few interesting things. M Mr. Warlock. Okay, I need to look at this map as is, right? So I've got the Dwemer Ruin here. And... Uh, sorry, I have the... Uh, the Dwemer Ruin's over here. And the fortress is over here. And then Kogarun is further down. So directly uh, northwest, it should be like right in here-ish, somewhere over here, I think. Maybe? Ah, uh, I've said this before, and I'll say this again. I expect Bethesda to, and I'm using air quotes here, return to their roots with um, Elder Scrolls VI. And by that I mean, if you are a fan of Skyrim, I would expect Skyrim's level of storytelling systems and sandbox to be expressed again in a... Um, in a new uh, location. That's uh, that's what I'm expecting. When I say return to their roots, I mean their last most profitable game. That's what I mean. So if you are a Skyrim fan, good news, everybody! It, yeah, it's, it, people are saying High Rock. Other people are saying Hammerfell. Um, people deconstructed that, like, five-second title card, which wasn't a real trailer. It was a teaser saying that they've, they've considered making it, right? And so, um, that teaser trailer, if you believe that the landscape being shown, leaving Skyrim and going in that direction, it's Azura's Crossing. Which is what what people believe was shown in the teaser trailer, the the non-existent uh, title card, um, little little animation reveal. And so, what I expect is, um, what do you call it? Um, what I very much expect is the um, like. J j okay, th this is this is mostly unfounded, um, completely unfounded, okay? Get ready for it. The Sinistral Elves are returning, and now the Red Guard people must look to the reincarnation of the Hoon Ding, the Sword Singer! Hold the Z button to perform sword singing. All right. So, as I was saying, there's going to be a civil war between the crowns and the forebearers. That's, that's what I expect. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, let me see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me pull this up. Okay. I think it was here. Of war. It is late in the second era. A time of war as the Empire of Tiber Septim sweeps through the kingdoms of Tamriel in a glorious bid for conquest. 
Shepton is opposed on all sides, but never more fiercely than by Hammerfell, the ancestral home of the Red Guards. The High King of Hammerfell, Fassard II, resists the Imperial invasions even as he sees other kingdoms crumble, until at last, without warning and surprisingly devoid of court treachery, death takes its full measure. With its High King dead, Hammerfell is crippled, plunging into a bloody civil war between the crowns, fighting for their homeland's continued sovereignty, and the forebears who have finally accepted the Emperor's rule. The crowns, led by the heir to Facade, Prince Ator, are continually victorious, spilling the blood of the forebears across Hammerfell's sands. From his seat of power in the port city of Stos Makai, Prince Ator slowly reunites his father's unraveled kingdom. Feeling their impending defeat, the forebears sign a pact with the Emperor, allowing him to bring his armies in, crush the crowns, and rule. This is Tiber Septim, by the way. That, that, that's him. That's the Emperor. There you go. Yep. As far as Akavir goes, Todd Howard says, let it stay mysterious. He doesn't want um, Elder Scrolls Online or anyone in uh, like the Bethesda Spear going to Akavir. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Britain, having seen the prince's victories at sea before, decides to bring his last resource to the fore. The dragon, Nathalilagos, proud jewel of the Imperial Crown. Ator commands his archers to ready their weapons. But is struck down himself by Richton's assassin, felled by an arrow whose poison spreads too fast. Ator's wizard attempts to save the prince, but the dragon ends his magic and the crown's hope for victory in a single fiery breath. Having conquered the crowns, the Emperor's forces claim rule over all of Hammerfell. Okay. Uh, back to back to the game here. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's time. Time to get a bow. Yes. This place looks fun. And is totally not mysterious. Burial caverns. Mm -hmm. Chasing realism is the death of some genres. Yes. Run while you can. I would despise a game that is accurate to medieval combat. Reach is king. Get get your spears, everybody. Stab the guy before he reaches you. He's dead. You win. Shoot. Oh, how, how about a how about a bow instead? Shoot him. Sh shoot him before he gets to you. He's dead. That's it. Yes. Kingdom Come isn't realistic. It has alchemy and shit, and uh, but it has a really cool RPG system where you have to learn how to do the master stroke, so you can just you know have an undefensible attack that just you clunk. Yes. Yep, yep. The RPG systems in uh, Kingdom Come are really fun. The idea that you have to train. You, you, start, you start off as a nobody, illiterate, uh, untrained peasant. And if you train up, you become stronger. You also go, I'm no thief! And then turn around and go, hey, can, you, can you steal? Can you teach me to steal things? Yeah. Okay. Do, 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 do. We're done with that. Away. Away. We're done with that topic. We'd love a realistic Chinese uh, warfare simulator. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yay. You only want realistic combat in a strategy game, not an RPG? Depends on how much of a power fantasy you want that RPG. 
He, like, Kingdom Come is actually a really cool power fantasy in the sense that you start off as a nobody. And through nepotism and uh, hard work, you too can become a... Um, you can rise up to become one of the greats. And, um... Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> it's glorious. Like, uh, imagine. Imagine Kingdom Come... Deliverance if it didn't have any nepotism in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, skeletons! That was pretty funny. He started to get up and got clunked. Alright. Ushalaku! Jump! I want to check this side area out first. What's this? Skulls. Skulls and incantations. Pool of water. Cool, we drank from it. I'm sure that, that green glowy stuff ain't gonna <laughs> cause us any issues. Whoop. Whoa! You don't deserve to live. You don't deserve to live, yes. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. M M Mr. Uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, uh, hold on. So yeah, uh, the, the, the trick to Kingdom Come Deliverance is that you are you're actually the illegitimate son of uh, Lord Raditz and um, that that that's what makes you the um, uh, that, that that's why you're given a bunch of breaks and re really uh, kind of streamlined into being a hero provided you put in the hard work if you don't put in the work then uh, you're gonna fucking fail most likely but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. Oh, 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 crap. That skeleton's fast. This is going to be fun. Oh, he went to pieces. All right. <laughs> Let me uh, see here. Do, 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 do. If it was realistic, Henry would be done for wearing armor above his station. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, the game has the power of nepotism and alchemy and all kinds of other shit. By the way, if you haven't already played Kingdom Come Deliverance, do the church, the preacher scene. It is, it's one of the best uh, scenes in video games. Yeah, it's it's really great. Yeah, you, you, you get drunk, you do some whoring, and once you're done with that. You then give a sermon in a church, and you have a, like a terrible hangover at the time, and you've not been prepared at all. And it is um, it is one of the best like scenes in video games. Period. Like, yeah. Whoop. Hmm. Scrolls. Oh, alchemy ingredients this is fine. So, no, if you you really want uh, if you want realism, try a game called Verdun. It is awful. Very realistic World War One trench simulator. You will get shot, crippled, and die. And, and and as you're bleeding out, you will wonder why. A mummy just fell over dead here. I didn't do anything. Okay. The mummy isn't shutting up. It just keeps making its noise. Okay, it's, it's done. Money. I'm stealing the Ushulaku's uh, currency. Truly incredible. Dead adventurer. Wow. That's pretty cool. I want your everything, dead adventurer. Okay. That's pretty awesome. Thank you. Okay. 
As I was saying... Dead Adventure, Mummy, bunch bunch of stuff here in the Ushulaku place. Gotta go this way. Uh, that's the way back. Damn it! I'm gonna go over here. Mm, already been there. Let's do, do, what, what else? Uh, more jumps. That's the Dead Adventurer. Should be able to come in this way. Uh, hello there. Damn, it's an ordinator skeleton. Wow. Wonder why he had uh, uh, ordinator stuff. Kind of crazy. Oh, well. Good enough. Crazy. Another skeleton's coming in. Very good. We got him. That is neat. Mummy there. Has a silver spear. I think it looks pretty cool. I need the bow, though. I don't really care about um, the mummy encased in shock shells. Is there another mummy up here? Is that a silver staff? Cool, I thought that was an Imperial cult thing. I mean, no doubt the Ashlanders trade for a bunch of their stuff, but still. That's really weird. That one had an axe. Okay. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Okay. That way's back to the glowy stuff. Mm-hmm. There's like the nod and wink of this mission. Um, go get the bow, but don't rob our ancestors. Yeah, exactly. Tech religious, yes. Just get the bow. Burger? I don't know what you're talking about. See you later. Hmm. I don't see the bow. I'm confused. At least my acrobatic skill is going up for what that's worth. Hmm. Yeah, we found a spark cleaver. Spear. And staff. Hmm. Ramen. I got... I bought, like, a crate of ramen from, um... The Costco Business Center. Got it real cheap. So whenever, uh... Neither of us feel like cooking... Whoa, mummy died there. What's up with that? Oh, God, he's back, and he's dead again. Wait, what? Um, He just got up and died again and dropped loot again, like fresh loot. That was... I don't know what's up with that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Rat! Truly. The honored ancestors. Mm hmm. Yes. You prefer to make proper ramen? I understand that. But, uh. Yeah, like. My, uh. My cups of ramen are specifically for the case where none of us wants to cook. Um, kind of interesting. I mention this every once in a while, but I have a, a ramen topper here. What you do is you, you you know you peel up the lid of the ramen, you pour the water in, then you put the lid back down. The lid will typically, um, it'll typically peel back up. So what you do is you put this ramen topper on, and it just sits on the corner of the ramen cup, and as a result, it keeps the uh, lid from peeling back up. Yeah, it's a ramen topper.
This way. Okay. I see. Kingdom Come Deliverance doesn't have crossbows. Didn't know about that, but that show like that shows how little I remember. I remember the like the the broad strokes of the game, but I only played it once, and I haven't uh, played the DLCs yet. I would like to get around to doing that eventually. Mm -hmm. You you were making a comment about the ramen topper. And I have no idea. Like, top, bottom, I, I don't know. No idea. Mm -hmm. Let's get going. This area is really strange. There's a burial that way, and then there's more. This area is huge. This Ushulaku burial site is gigantic. Ghosts. I hear them. I know they're here. Fuck. Let me try that again. Let me do that one again. Oh no, skeleton. Damn. That thing is tanky. Yes, we need definitely need to purge that ghost. Ancestor ghost. Orcish tower shield. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of bone meal. Mm-hmm. Remember using turn undead when you were here? Makes sense. You can avoid fights that way. Pretty cool. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. Try again. Got it. I don't think... I, no, I can't get up there. I'm sure it isn't there, but that's an interesting spot. Whoop! There's a mummy up there. It seems to just fall and... It, it, like, it gets up and it dies. It's very strange. The great sage was a tall, untidy man, bearded but bald. Mm. His library resembled him. All the books had been moved over the years to the bottom shelves where they gathered in dusty conglomerations. He used several of the books in his current lecture, explaining to his students, Taksim and Volgoldak, how the Mages' Guild had first been founded by Vanus Galerian. They had many questions about Galerian's beginnings in the Sigic Order and how the study of magic there differed from the Mages' Guild. It was and is a very structured way of life, explained the great sage. Quite elitist, actually. That was the aspect of it Galerian most objected to. He wanted the study of magic to be free. Well, not free exactly, but at least available to all who could afford it. In doing that, he changed the course of life in Tamriel. He codified the praxis and rituals used by all modern potion makers, item makers and spell makers, didn't he, great sage? asked Vongoldak. That was only part of it. Magic as we know it today comes from Vanus Galerian. He restructured the schools to be understandable by the masses. He invented the tools of alchemy and enchanting so everyone could concoct whatever they wanted, whatever their skills and purse would allow them to, without fears of magical backfire. Well, eventually he created that. What do you mean, great sage? asked Taksim. The first tools were more automated than the ones we have today. Any layman could use them without the least understanding of enchantment and alchemy. On the Isle of Arteum, the students had to learn the skills laboriously and over many years. But Galerian decided that was another example of the Sigic's elitism. The tools he invented were like robotic master enchanters and alchemists, capable of creating anything the customer required, provided he could pay. 
So someone could, for example, create a sword that would cleave the world in twain, asked Vongeldak. I suppose, in theory, but it would probably take all the gold in the world, chuckled the great sage. No, I can't say we were ever in very great danger, but that it isn't to say that there weren't a few unfortunate incidents where an unschooled yokel invented something beyond his ken. Eventually, of course, Galarian tore apart his old tools and created what we use today. It's a little elitist, requiring that people know what they're doing before they do it, but remarkably practical. What did people invent? asked Taksim. Are there any stories? You're trying to distract me so I don't test you, said the great sage, but I suppose I can tell you one story just to illustrate a point. This particular tale takes place in city of Alinor on the west coast of Somerset Isle and concerns a scribe named Thorbad. This was in the second era, not long after Vanus Galerian had first founded the Mages Guild and chapter houses had sprung up all over Somerset, though not yet spread to the mainland of Tamriel. For five years, this scribe, Thawabad, had conducted all his correspondence to the outside world by way of his messenger boy, Gorgos. Gorgos. For the first year of his adoption of the hermit life, his few remaining friends and family, friends and family of his dead wife, truth be told, had tried visiting, but even the most indefatigable kin gives up eventually when given no encouragement. No one had a good reason to keep in touch with Thawabad Hulzik, and in time, very few even tried. His sister-in-law sent him the occasional letter with news of people he could barely remember, but even that communication was rare. Most of messages to and from his house dealt with his business, writing the weekly proclamation from the Temple of Ariel. These were bulletins nailed on the temple door, community news, sermons, that sort of thing. The first message Gorgos brought him that day was from his healer, reminding him of his appointment on Turdus. Thawabad took a while to write his response, glum and affirmative. He had the Crimson Plague, which he was being treated for at considerable expense. You have to remember these were the days before the School of Restoration had become quite so specialized. It was a dreadful disease and had taken away his voice box. That was why he only communicated by script. The next message was from Alphias, the secretary at the church, as curt and noxious as ever. Thorbad attached is Sundas' sermon, next week's events calendar, and the obituaries. Try to liven them up a little. I wasn't happy with your last attempt. Thorbad had taken the job putting together the bulletin before Alphias joined the temple, so his only mental image of her was purely theoretical and had evolved over time. At first he thought of Alphias as an ugly, fat, slow desk covered with warts, more recently, she had mutated into a rail-thin spinster orsess. Of course, it was possible his clairvoyance was accurate and she had just lost weight. Whatever Alphias looked like, her attitude towards Thorbad was clear, unwavering disdain. She hated his sense of humor, always found the most minor of misspellings, and considered his structure and calligraphy the worst kind of amateur work. Luckily, Working for a temple was the next most secure job to working for the good king of Alinor. It didn't bring in very much money, but his expenses were minimal. The truth was, he didn't need to do it anymore. He had quite a fortune stashed away, but he didn't have anything else to occupy his days. And the truth was further that having little else to occupy his time and thoughts, the bulletin was very important to him. Gorgos, having delivered all the messages, began to clean and as he did so, he told Thawabad all the news in town. The boy always did so, and Thawabad seldom paid him any attention, but this time he had an interesting report. The Mages Guild had come to Alinor. As Thawabad listened intently, Gorgos told him all about the Guild, the remarkable Arch Magister, and the incredible tools of alchemy and enchanting. Finally, when the lad had finished, Thawabad scribbled a quick note and handed it and a quill to Gorgos. The note read, have them enchant this quill. It will be expensive, said Gorgos. Tharbad gave Gorgos a sizable chunk of the thousands of gold pieces he had saved over the years and sent him out the door. Now, Tharbad decided he would finally have the ability to impress Alphias and bring glory to the temple of Ari El. 
The way I've heard the story, Gorgos had thought about taking the gold and leaving Alinor, but he had come to care for poor old Thaurbad. And even more, he hated Alfiers, who he had to see every day to get his messages for his master. It wasn't perhaps for the best of motivations, but Gorgos decided to go to the guild and get the quill enchanted. The mages' guild was not then, especially not then, an elitist institution, as I have said, but when the messenger boy came in and asked to use the item maker, he was greeted with some suspicion. When he showed the bag of gold, the attitude melted, and he was ushered in the room. Now I haven't seen one of the enchanting tools of old, so you must use your imagination. There was a large prism for the item to be bound with magicka, assuredly, and an assortment of soul gems and globes of trapped energies. Other than that, I cannot be certain how it looked or how it worked. Because of all the gold he gave to the guild, Gorgos could infuse the quill with the highest price soul available, which was something Daedric called Feyfolken. The initiate at the guild, being ignorant as most guild members were at that time, did not know very much about the spirit, except that it was filled with energy. When Gorgos left the room, the quill had been enchanted to its very limit, and then some. It was virtually quivering with power. Of course, when Tharbad used it, that's when it became clear how over his head he was. And now, said the great sage, it's time for your test. But what happened? What were the quill's powers? cried Taxi. You can't stop the tale there, objected Vongolduck. We will continue the tale after your conjuration test, provided you both perform exceptionally well, said the great sage. Well, <laughs> Faye Falcon won. There are more. There are more to, uh, entries to this tale of Faye Falcon, but the Book of Daedra's here. Some spoiled potions. Yes. So, what were the quill's powers? The quill uh, is gold. It's a very powerful Daedra. So, what did the quill do? We don't know. We'll have to find Faithfalcon 2 to find uh, the answer. Uh, <clears throat> oh no. This is locked. I need to open it with the open door spell. Mm -hmm. It tried to paralyze me and it failed. Such is the way of things. Next skeleton. Victory is mine. <clears throat> Another skeleton. Bargoth said, run while you can. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, skeletons here. Hey, Golden Saint, help me destroy these skeletons. With the power of conjuration. Now you're going to get it. Oh, there's Fargoth. He said the skeleton is now going to get it. I believe him. The skeleton got it. Well, its weapons are puny. But we will, uh, I guess we can't rest while enemies are nearby. How far can we go to rest? You can only rest on solid ground, which is not water. We go over here, we can rest for an hour. That is the way. Feels like we've been awake for seven hours. Well then nap for two more. We should be fine. We're fully refreshed. <clears throat> you can have a single spell that summons uh, multiple uh, targets, uh, or it, that has multiple effects, yes. But really, you should summon the Daedra if you are a devout tribunal worshiper. Because the tribunal is well known for summoning Daedra. Manipulating the undead is something you should do less, unless your ancestors approve of it. Ahem. Mm hmm. Let me see here. That's a mummy. Good alchemy ingredients off these uh, mummies. But uh, that's about it. Is that an ebony helm? 
crazy. Not for me, but it is an ebony helm. All right, this room is a dead end. I think the only reason you come here is for the ebony helm. Makes sense. Gonna dive out to another section then. Where could the bow be, I wonder? This is a big cavern. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tales of Eternia also had a cooking system called, uh, I don't think Tales of Destiny did, though. Mm-hmm. Was allowed to talk about private servers? You talking about the World of Warcrafts? Because, yeah, I talk about private servers from time to time. Provided you know you bought the game, and therefore, you know, you... Uh, I, yeah, no problem. Let me see here. What else we got? We can add a couple more things. Hmm. Right. I hear a ghost. Where could the bow be? I hear the ghosts. Ghost and ordinator. Why is there an ordinator skeleton? No one can challenge me. Crazy. Skeleton Warriors. Wasn't that a TV show at one point? A really bad TV show? I remember... Um, <clears throat> um, there was this one uh, scene in which uh, a uh, in which they transformed a pers uh, uh, a person into a skeleton warrior and I looked at that and I said <clears throat> I'm going to use that in a Razat Han shit post and so I did all right what was it um, mm hmm. Grab all that. I don't see the bow yet, but we must continue searching. The area is very dark. Yourself. Okay, so I suspect it's on a different level. That's not in this area at all. In which case, we must go continue to go up. Up and away. Maybe it's here. Who knows? Skeleton. Oh, this is too easy. Fargoth, I pissed him off by accident. Yeah, I actually <laughs> pissed off Fargoth. What a shame. He was a good mur. What a rotten way to die. Good work, Fargoth. You defeated the enemy and forgot that I hit you. As it should be, now and forever. Okay. We should be fine. The Ushulaku bow could be anywhere. That area goes down, down, down. That's a drag chest piece. It's like one of the best medium armors in the game. I don't need it because I have adamantium, but if I did need it, then uh, that would be the place to get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, the skeletons are here. Must run. Fargoth, be careful. The skeletons are after me. I'll see here they are. Dead. This is too easy. That's a caster skeleton. It too oh, must die. Too easy. Even oh. death may die. I pissed oh. off Fargoth again. If I transition through a door, then Fargoth stops attacking me. But it's still brutal. Just brutal. I'm hungry. I must eat. We must eat the food. What, what are we doing? 
I, I, I spent like an hour and a half yapping, and then we've also been uh, proceeding to do the Ashlander quests. Yapping is fun. Very good. Mm hmm. Ahem. Moving along, moving along. Let's keep on going. Wait, no. I'm gonna rest for an hour. Need to heal myself. We should be fine. Can't say I've used any prefabricated Skyrim mod packs. I tend to uh, make my own mod lists for fun. I spend about a week messing around with different mods before I settle on something that I spend like two to four hundred hours on. Okay, let's rest again. And... Um, yeah, it's still time to get a bow, but it's time to get a bow, too. <clears throat> Somewhere, we'll find the Ushulaku um, bow. Somewhere around here. Lizard lover. Can't say I am. Whoa. Is that a Draugr? Oh, it's a mummy. Okay, fair enough. As long as the mummy doesn't revive itself, which it can do at any time. Mummies are scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Give me a sec. My body said, oh, you're streaming now. You should be coughing a lot. Even though I'll go like the whole day without coughing, you know, yeah. Yeah, you start a live stream and that that that's it. You'd be talking too much. Uh shock bite mace. Some pretty good items, but oh god the mummy oh wait. Why are the mummies reviving and dying over and over? It's really funny to look at, but uh very stupid. Some Sujama there, no big deal. Just trying to see what else we got here. No idea. Onwards. Yeah, I like quest mods as well. Uh, that is a Nordic Claymore. That's pretty cool. I assume that... Uh, yeah, I don't see the bow anywhere. That's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this a wall. We go this way now. Up and around. There's lots of water. Lots of other direction. That goes further up. Crazy. <clears throat> Everyone's an expert. I see. I see. You mean WebMD? WebMD is the uh, curse to the hypochondriac. Ooh, there we go. Uh, what is that? This is going. That is a lich. Must be a lesser lich. There's another one. You don't deserve to live. Maybe it's the same one, I don't know. Vargoth paralyzed the undead. Okay, he's done. That was an undead, uh, a frost guardian and an undead necromancer, crazy. They're both very dead. Hmm, <clears throat> yes. Cough, sore throat, WebMD, you have throat cancer. Jeez. I'm sorry, son. You've got Ebola. That, that fever is absolute proof. <clears throat> right.
Yeah, we've entered the misinformation age where um, different um, different uh, like AIs or pattern pattern matching algorithms, I should say, make um, news articles in order to get clicks on miscellaneous websites. And since those are the only answers that come in line with your Google search, whatever delusions those that AI had <clears throat> are uh, served up to you. Yep. It's true, it's true. This is locked. We must open it with the power of open door. Potions. That Magicka potion is super important. But I'm noticing a distinct lack of uh, well, everything. Hellfire. Isn't there a song? Hellfire. Yes. They look at me and they say, the pearly gates won't open for your kind. All right. <clears throat> We're going up. This way! I think this is the burial. Big ol'... Oh, jeez! Oh, God, I pissed off Fargoth again. Run. Oof. Okay. I may have pissed off Fargoth too much. <clears throat> it's fine. We can't escape. That's an undead footman. With a silver saber and orcish tower shield. Incredible. Yep. Said you buried yourself between uh, beneath too many layers of irony and you don't know who you are anymore. See, um, the reality is that I've... Uh, uh, that people are only now realizing things about me because I've made it more obvious. And in fact, people came to incorrect assumptions because that they they wanted to believe certain things. Yes, they they simply believed what they wanted to believe initially, and so they're they're doing copium where they say it's ironic. Okie dokie. <laughs> the mystery is gone. Oh no. But then, but then, people make leaps of logic further and go, <clears throat> Are you, by chance, a trans? No. No, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> People say that all the time. I, I get that like three times a... Uh, three times a week. Okay. Mm. Now then. <laughs> he said crab beat shark. Only if it's a big enough crab, yes. <clears throat> Do I have uh, mental issues all my life? Am I going to talk about them? No, not your fucking business. <laughs> all right. I do think it's funny, though, that some people use uh, their the issues as a, um, what do you call it? Uh, as some form of scoreboard. Mm-hmm. Said, if people think you're trans, you're cool. No, I'm a weirdo. I've never been cool. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Holy shit. I like weird things. Always have. Okay. People just um, 
run into assumptions. Many, many different assumptions. Yeah. And this way. Short blade for crabs. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing crab people in Wayward Realms. <clears throat> That's something they've already confirmed. Crab people. Fetcher. Fetcher. Far what, what's Fargoth doing? Whoa. No one can challenge me. No one can challenge Fargoth. Damn. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> well, thank you for the $2 magic. I appreciate it. Yes. You can't escape me. You don't deserve to live. Whoa. You don't deserve to live. You will die. One of us will I'm definitely die. weird. And, it won't and uh <clears throat> Well, I may have pissed off Fargoth again. I'm gonna Ooh. die. Running away. And I'm a okay with that. Okay, got to keep going. I'm bunny hopping my way out of here. This is the way. Cool. There's my target. Fight, coward. Problem is, uh, yeah. We're, we're good, we're good. <clears throat> you should run now. I'm still kind of laughing about that guy who went... I'm not here for a lecture! I'm here for video game! I mean, if you're here for video game, play the game yourself. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Gonna stop for a second. Rest. Yeah, Danny's streams are great. Like, uh... My, um... My only thing is uh, she has a tendency to use the vanilla engine. The vanilla engine gets a little crashy. Just a little crashy. Go watch a no-comment playthrough. I know, right? <clears throat> no, no, co uh, Morrowind, no commentary playthrough. Oof. You're here for the memes? The memes, you say? Wouldn't know anything about those. <clears throat> okay. This way. Mm -hmm. Drink. Hold on, what's this? Yeah, it's a glass bowl, some netch leather. We're entering tomb tombs now, I take it. Gonna get attacked by a ghost soon. There is getting a bit spooky. One of us will die here, and it won't be I believe Jam this ghost is tanky. We did it. That was the Wraith. Is that the that's the bone biter bull? That's that's what we're looking for. Cool, cool. <clears throat> yep. Right. Up, up, and away. You ever seen Turnip Boy commits tax evasion? It's a pretty good game. Uh, Turnip Boy Robs a Bank is the, uh, sequel. But, uh, yeah, I, I played Turnip Boy, uh, Commits Tax Evasion. It's a pretty good, uh, game. 
<clears throat> I'm going to drop down here. Because I can. Mm hmm. She tends to showcase open it uh, sorry, uh, MWSC stuff. But you enjoy. Yeah. I I understand that. I just won't be uh I, I, that's why I kinda am just like, yeah, unfortunate. I'm not saying uh her stuff is bad, far from it. I recommend uh her streams. It's just one of those uh oopsie situations. Can I jump up on the rock? Can I jump on the shield? Can I get up here? <clears throat> What's Turnip Boy uh, commits tax evasion? It's, uh, it's a fun little uh, game where you run around the world like Legend of Zelda, except uh, you commit tax evasion. Mage Bane. That's a long blade. I don't need it. I'm going down. Mm-hmm. You said the uh, vanilla engine is basically irrelevant. I remember there was one guy who got very angry because he wanted to explain how OpenMW isn't needed every time uh, we mention it. And so uh, I uh, timed him out and told him to stop it. And he got angry at me and said, uh, um, you need to stop being a warrior for, uh, for OpenMW. And, uh, you know, be, uh, stop being so fragile. I thought, no, I just, I didn't want you to bring down my streams with your, uh, like the, the mood of my streams with your constant naysaying. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's considered bad form to shit on whatever you're playing. I had this trouble with Starfield as well. Like, I was enjoying Starfield at the time and people were just bitching about it. And so I had to kind of explain to them, um, I, the different p person, I had to explain to them, hey, you know, I'm gonna, gonna time you out if you, you don't stop bitching about this. And, uh, then they didn't stop bitching and they, they, you know, they got timed out and they got angry and they said, if you're, uh, I have to, I have to go the other way. I got it. <clears throat> if you're just going to simp for this game, then, uh. You know, no wonder you, you have so few viewers. I'm like, you're banned for life. It was uh, kind of funny. But yeah, there are people who wanted to use the chat not as a chat, you know, where, where we talk to each other, but as a pulpit to espouse their hatred of video game. They didn't like, but click on a stream about it? Yeah. Well, what happened was they... Uh, uh, yeah, they they basically wanted me to play other games. It's kind of like how uh, if when I was playing Skyrim, I get people occasionally who go, um, I hate that you have to play this game for views. It, it's so bad. It's like, uh, what do you mean? Of course, it's storytelling is bad, but I enjoy the game. Fuck off. Yeah, p people are kind of crazy. <clears throat> Human beings are self-centered. I'm no exception. Except the difference is that it's my stream, so, you know, I get to be self-centered. Because it's mine. Going to be fun. <laughs> uh, why can't I hit the cliff eraser? There we go. We got it. This, oh god, I don't want the red cliff eraser. Nope, 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 nope. Not that way. To the north. Paralyzed in midair. Yes, it's very stupid. It just floats there. Yep. Skyrim for views. Yeah. People are crazy. Okay. Ahem. <clears throat> What I'm trying to say is that people conjure their own images uh, about, like, they come to the, they make their own assumptions, you know? Uh, let me see. It happens to one of your uh, streamers. 
Uh, happens to one of your streamers, uh, dot his. Uh, Fallout, uh, people come on when he's live and other stuff and wanted to play Fallout 76 with them. Is there something you need? I don't very often play with viewers. I think I m make an exception with uh, Final Fantasy XIV, specifically. Fallout 76 is one of those games where I want a single-player dungeon crawl through, uh, like, ruins and stuff. Um, but I think Final Fantasy XIV, because it is a true multiplayer game in the sense that uh, there are, you know, dungeons, raids, and um, things like that. Um, you said viewers are disgusting. I say humans are disgusting. Self-centered creatures that um, I like despite being terrible. Yes. I, I, I should know. I'm one of them. <laughs> Wait, you're not a robot? You're not an alien? You're not a cat? Yeah. Meow. Uh, you'd be surprised. There, there was one dude who actually thought... That I wanted, like, I was pretending to be a cat person. Like, an actual, like, I, that I was being a furry. Because I had I had my avatar up, and they're like, Excuse me! Uh, what, what? I was like, what, what the... They, they, they thought that this this was uh, my true expression of uh, wanting to be, a, like, a, 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 an animal or some, some shit. Yeah. <laughs> They actually thought that... <clears throat> Can you imagine? Anyway. Um, yes, yes. We are as social as we are selfish. Correct. But, uh, hold on. I, I've got another meme in the same folder. It was this one. This one's pretty good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> give me a moment. Now then, um, what else? Yeah. We're going this way. Mm-hmm. You've been called a furry for playing elves. Elves? <clears throat> I see, I see. I usually use this chart to explain things, and it pisses people off because they, you know, have, di have differing opinions. But uh, when, when you have uh, stripper accessories, um, you're not furry. If you, you th then, uh, then you get the people with their fursonas, and they are very much furry. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. So, Outlander. So, Outlander, have you completed the initiation rite? Here's the bow. This is my father's bone biter bow. You have completed the initiation rite. I name you Clan Friend of the Ashlanders. Keep my father's bow and bear it with honor. You are a friend of our tribe and may rest in any Urshilaku bed. But do not harm other tribe members or take their things. And now I will fulfill my other promise. Go to the wise woman's yurt, and Nibani Maisa shall examine you and test you against the Nerevarin prophecies. We're going to be examined, yes. Um, tell me more about the Urshilaku. The Urshilaku are the Ashlanders of the Northern Ashlands and the West Gash. I am the chief of the Urshilaku, and Nibani Maisa is our wise woman, a mm -hmm. deep and shrewd counselor and seer of the Nerevarin cult. I can't wait to rest in their beds. That'll be fun. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Bane. Uh, what else? Talking about Nerevar. Oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's, that's not what I was looking for. Disturbing dreams? Am I an old woman that you should tell me these things? No. Speak to a wise woman. Got it. Prophecies? Now that you are a clan friend, I want to speak plainly. I find it hard to believe that you are the Nereverine. You are an outlander, but the Nereverine comes to drive all outlanders from Morrowind. How could an outlander be the incarnate? The great houses stole our lands and mocked us with false gods. The godless outlanders steal our land and our dignity. 
The Nereverine is the last hope the Ashlanders have. I will let no Outlander steal this hope from us. Mm -hmm. I see. Are you working on the World of Warcraft video with Patrician? No. No, that is that is Patrician's alone. Uh, he he has um, he has teamed up with some people on um, like a classic WoW server, and I have purposefully, purposefully, not touched World of Warcraft since Classic was announced. People were like, "You're gonna you're gonna play Classic? I know how you played vanilla. You said you played old school WoW, so you're gonna play Classic, right?" No. I already played Classic when it was called World of Warcraft. I'm done with that. You give Now, if you give me more content, like new dungeons, new raids, and stuff like that, and, uh, you, you know, like put it in the Classic style, I might, I might have back then considered coming back. But since then, they've changed their Battle.net terms of service, and they've done a bunch of other stuff to the point where I'm just like, you disgust me. And so I will have nothing to do with them for now. Um, I say for now because at the end of the day, I have no real convictions outside of how I feel moment to moment. So um, if they can make me, um, uh, you know, make me somehow less disgusted with them, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and come back. Like, like, like how I, I hopped off Twitch, right? I, I, I said, no more Twitch. They disgust me with their behavior. And then they said, hey, you can multi-stream. And I said, if I don't have to leave my other platforms, fine, whatever. And so <clears throat> that's why I'm back on Twitch, because they said, you can multi-stream now. You know, like, it, I'm not saying it's impossible for Blizzard to... Uh, um to get me to re you know come back to wow i'm just saying it's not gonna happen uh, do, 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 do. would it take me a year to make what if starfield was good so as far as that goes i need to wait for them to fit like release their dlc and release their mod making tools i need to know what is the final form of starfield <clears throat> I said, sorry you made your husband ask if he had Asperger's. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Cat ears in YouTube. Uh, so I have this... Um, whenever I don't want to be on camera, I got this little uh, VTuber avatar thing I use, right? I, I just use that for fun. A family member uh, saw that, gave me these as a gag gift, and it turns out I like them because I'm a fucking weirdo. And uh, that's it. That's the whole story. <clears throat> yeah. That's that's it. <laughs> okay. I mean, when it comes to business, like actual serious business, when I'm on like a Zoom call or whatever, I look like this, right? I got I got a normal headset. It's just um why when I could live stream video games and have uh have cat ears. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, let's go. These are serious words, words of life and death. I see honor and merit in you and am proud to name you clan friend. But take care what you say and do in the name of the Nereverine. Now go question Nibani Misa and learn all she can tell you. Radio. Let's get out of here. Said programmer sucks. I mean, like, I, I'm wearing tan pants right now. That's it. Um, as far as, uh, Programmer socks go. Probably not going to happen anytime soon. Lol. Yep, yep. Did always be normal? Uh, ne never normal. I'm a weirdo. Always have been. People just have uh, started taking notice because I've uh, cared less about appearing normal. Yes. 
so, uh, someday I'm sure someone will pay me enough to consider uh, wearing alternative clothing, but that day is not today. Yes. <clears throat> All right. How you doing? What would virtue, Outlander? I'm a clan friend, which means she can teach me things. Very good. Mm, hello? Welcome, Outlander. I have a few humble items to offer for sale. Or perhaps there is something you wish to discuss. I'll discuss in a second. First, I want to see the humble items you have for sale. They are indeed very humble. As in... I don't care about them. Yep. I think they're all kind of awful. Let me see here. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Go ahead, okay. I'm listening. You... A uh, hard stance on what comes to what is a game and what is not? I mean... Game? Like, I mean, I, I played the, the visual novel games. <clears throat> and those are definitely undeniably games. My goodness. All right. Welcome, Outlander. Now that you are a clan friend, can I beg you to assist me with a matter of personal vengeance? Personal vengeance. Zale Subadamael, an outcast Ashlander, betrayed Urshilaku hospitality and killed my husband. If you could find Zale Subadamael, kill him, and bring the justice of his death to me, I can promise you a fine reward, my dead husband's enchanted spirit spear. It is a great treasure, but I would be glad if it might purchase the vengeance that would set my husband's spirit to rest. Nice. Bring me news of Zale Subadamael's death, and the spirit spear is yours. That sounds pretty cool. I say that, and, uh... I'm gonna say... My head was itching in the exact place where that damn headset was. Because, of course, what do you mean? The chemicals are seeping into the head. The transformation has begun now. Uh, what's up? This outcast murdered my husband. I have heard that he has taken refuge in a place called Ahara Saplit on the island of Sheogorad, the large island north of Vardenfell. You might find information about Zale Subadamael or a Harasaplit camp in the fishing village of Dagon Fell on Sheogorad Island. Um, <clears throat> Elder Scrolls 6 is taking so long because they only started actually working on it about three months ago. Anyway, let's uh, see here. What are you drinking? Coffee! I'm drinking coffee. Mm. It is 12.43 p.m. In other words, right afternoon. Okay, so... Um, taking refuge up north. I see. You heard they have it playable already. Yeah, I imagine if you just take, um, you know, Elder Scrolls, uh, what do you call it, Elder Scrolls V and quote-unquote upgrade it slightly. I mean, of course you can have a playable slice. You don't need any assets or anything. You just have, a, like, an empty space to walk around in and, uh, and perform standard attacks and things that were in Skyrim, right? It's easy to say it's playable when you haven't been, you know, when you don't need content, right? There's such a thing as programmer graphics and uh, test environments. You don't need content for that. I mean, you say Elder Scrolls 6 is going to suck, but if you liked Skyrim, I imagine you'll probably like Elder Scrolls 6, provided you don't set your expectations higher than Skyrim. Okay. <clears throat> I like Irish coffee. 
It's one of my favorite drinks. But without the Baileys, what's the point? May I help you, Outlander? I'm actually looking for the wise woman. You said Skyrim is a low standard. Well, that's up to I'm you. I'm never too busy for good talk. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to talk to me. Welcome. Hearth and hand are yours. Uh, fair enough. Welcome. Welcome. That's the Ashcon. I'm looking for the wise woman. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, outside of Elder Scrolls Blades and uh, Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard, I don't think there are any bad Elder Scrolls games. Redguard is a good story, has uh, good cutscenes, but, um, you know. Huh. Walk with virtue, Outlander. I was going to ask you about the Navarine cult. Prophecies. No. Where was the wise woman, though? I could have sworn she had a yurt over here. It must be the big yurt. Uh, this is it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Never No. tangerine. Ta ta no, no. Uh, uh, Tang, uh, Tree. Yes, that's, that, that's what we are. So, they've told me of you, Outlander. Or shall I say, clan friend. You are hard-headed and ignorant, but perhaps it is not your fault. My lord Ashkan says you will ask me about the Nereverine prophecies. He also says I will test you against the Nereverine prophecies. I must v do as my lord Ashkan says. So ask your questions, and I will test you. Let's do it. There are many Nereverin prophecies, and they suggest many things. Aspect and uncertain parents. The moon and star. Sleepers. Seven curses. The curse's bane. The prophecy of the stranger. The prophecy of the seven visions. The lost prophecies. Mm-hmm. Let me see here. <laughs> Masters.skyrim. What? <laughs> um, wow. Okay, then. Ask me of these things. If you are patient. If you would be wise. Or if you are impatient to know, just ask, do I pass the test of the Nereverine prophecies? Go ahead, Outlander. I am the wise woman. Ask your questions, and I will answer. Here we go. There are many Nereverin prophecies. Ask me Fuck. these things. If you are, if what you say is true, you mm -hmm. are indeed born on a certain day of uncertain parents. This is part of the prophecy. But many have the same birthday, and many are not sure of their parents. It I see. It is interesting, but it does not make you the Nereverin. Right. Um, tell me of the moon and star. Legend says Indoral Nerevar's family standard bore the moon and star, and Nerevar's armor and weapons bore this sign. Some say he bore a moon and star birthmark. Some say he has a magic ring marked with a moon and star. Others say he was born under a moon and star. In any case, I think the moon and star is the mark of the Nereverine, and you do not have this mark, so you are not the Nereverine. Hey, hear that? I'm I'm not not the one, which is what I my character expected because, you know, being the Neverine is a heretical thing, right? We're only helping Caius so that we can come to understand his plans and, you know, uh, take the fight to Dagothur. <clears throat> we we don't really believe ourselves in Neverine, but that's a different matter. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Have I played Cyberpunk? Not yet. I plan to eventually. Okay. Let me see here. Mm hmm. Next. The Sleepus. Rumors say that in the towns, 
Mad cultists called sleepers are attacking people, saying that Dagoth Ur has awakened and will drive the Outlanders from Morrowind. Perhaps it is just a coincidence, but I think it is a sign of the Nereverim. Not necessarily a sign that you are the Nereverim. Perhaps the time of the Nereverim has come, and you have come at the same time. This is not passing a test, but it may mean you have some part to play in the coming of the Nereverim. There we go, then. Ahem. <clears throat> anyway. Next, we've got the Seven Curses. It is another Ashlander prophecy of the Nereverim. It is called the Seven Curses of the Sharnat, but I do not know it, and I know no one who does. It may be lost. Such things happen. A wise woman dies or forgets or a clan is wiped out. Perhaps someone knows but is keeping it secret. Perhaps it is in one of those many books of your settled peoples. I have heard that the dissident priests of the temple may have such books. I see. And the Stranger. This is the best known of the Nereverine prophecies. We call it the Stranger. When earth is sundered and skies choked black, and sleepers serve the seven curses, to the hearth there comes a stranger, journeyed far neath moon and star. Though stark born to sire uncertain, his aspect marks his certain fate. Wicked stalk him, righteous curse him, prophets speak but all deny. Many trials make manifest, the stranger's fate, the curse's bane. Many touchstones try the stranger, many fall but one remains. I see, I see. That is about it then. <clears throat> Dagothar is the devil of, uh... Yeah, yeah, uh... Legend says Indoral Nerevar's family. I already, already did that. I already did that. Stark. Don't, don't worry about it. Just, uh, do I pass the test? You are not the Nereverim. You are one who may become the Nereverim. It is a puzzle and a hard one, but you have found some of the pieces, and you may find more. Do you choose to be the Nereverim? Then seek the lost prophecies among the dissident priests of the temple. Find the lost prophecies. Bring them to me, and I will be your guide. And take these copies of the Stranger and the Seven Visions. Now, mm -hmm. I have told you all I know. Go, think on what I've told you, and do what must be done. Let me see here. Uh, <clears throat> you said keep it simple, stupid? Oh, yes. Keep it simple, stupid is great for design. Unfortunately, um, in Morrowind, they had writers doing design. But then you flip it around, and now they have designers doing writing. It's, um, you know, it may, may sound like it's the same, but it's not. And the results are uh, pretty dramatic, actually. Let's uh, pull up the Todd Howard meme. Uh, this one first. I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. I did. I read it on the internet, so it's true. Um, what do you look for when considering a new writer? That's a tricky one. Actually, our designers are our writers. So obviously we look at writing samples. Um, you know, it's another thing where uh, most people who do video games tend to overwrite. We overwrite. Like, we, are, we write way too much stuff. Um, most people who play Fallout, I watch them play it. We wrote all this brilliant stuff. And they get to a guy and they're like, just jamming the button. Shut up, 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 Oh, that's who I kill. Thanks. So I think the trickiest thing to do is to write really short things just to get the information across. But our writer, we don't have anyone who's a sole writer. They're also quest designers level designers, so <clears throat> um, if you're looking for that kind of thing, we would look for, like on a quest design, you really have to understand some programming language. We'd look for a quest, like here's what the player does, here's what the characters say, that kind of stuff. And that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work.
Go ahead. Do you have questions about the Nereverine prophecies, or other questions to ask me? Or do you bring me news of the lost prophecies? Oh no. Go hmm. ahead, I'm listening. Oh no. Oh no. Sometimes it doesn't just work. We're going to go see Caius. Mew. Hmm. Not even a bit. Dirty lies. Lies and slander. <coughs> That is a skull on some root. Incredible. We must continue south. Travel in this direction. It's a corpus monster. Corpus! It turns you into a zombie. Okay, here we go. We're traveling bit by bit. The OpenMW engine? I'm using it right now. I'm not using Bethesda's engine. This is going to be fun. I recommend checking out my uh, new player's guide to Morrowind, which contains information about OpenMW. What are you? Crazy. That was an Ash Slav. Well, we defeated him. And we will continue our journey in this direction. Mm-hmm. Yes. Closed Morrowind. You know, you, you're thinking of Morrowind 2. Morrowind 2 was an amazing adventure. Which has been taken down off of the Nexus. You'll have to find it somewhere else. Morrowind 2 speaks of... Uh, not safe for work things, as well as the Fargoth cycle and the rise of Fargoth Ur. Okay. What's attacking me? Baby! Why did Baby Guar attack? It was feral. <clears throat> right. You don't deserve to live. Are there mods that make the Six House playable? Yes. Are there mods that make the Six House playable in a realistic way? No, it's all fan fiction. Game Boy O. We're gonna take a moment and begin walking. Get my stamina back up. Yes. Here, hold on, I'll get the video for ya. <laughs> Yawns a plenty, okay. Mm, right. Going over to videos. Scrolling down. There's the video. I just need to hit the copy button. And that should do it. Pleased to be checking out this YouTube video. Yes, indeedy. 
Double checking. Yes, that's it. Very good. Onwards and sideways. Uh, uh. I've uh, shown off the trailers to Robo Wind several times. Whoop. I'm going to slide down. We're fighting. Ow. Got it. The light bulb in the fridge goes out. Yes. Did you know that the compressor on your refrigerator can die without the light going out? Meaning that your fridge stops becoming cold and your food spoils while the light continues to turn on? True. That can happen. I've had to replace the, um, what do you call it? I had to buy like a couple bags of ice and fill the refrigerator with ice while we uh, got a replacement compressor. That happened. <clears throat> All right. Isn't too bad though. Um, like we've had a power outage once before, and when that happened, it was just like, yeah. All right. In Enslaver die. Challenge me. Yep. Moon sugar. Invisibility potion. Shard blade. Fargoth. I'm over in cupboard. Help me. What bitter course? The bitter coast is named for the salt marshes along the coast northwest of town. From here to the Odai River, it's rugged coastal hills. Then it's roadless, uninhabited swamp all the way north to the West Gash and the Sea of Ghosts. Hla Ohad is a fishing settlement north of the Odai, and the fishing village of Narmok is even farther. Both places are small, isolated, and poor. Hunting is fair, and some folks gather mushrooms, pods, and flowers for alchemists. Yep, yep. Hmm. I see, I see. Thank you much. Oh, I need to give you, however, the power... Come with me, Fargoth. Yes. I must uh, give unto you the um, armor pieces. We're going to have to go sell a lot of items on our way. But we're going back to Caius. To Gaius. Caius. Go this way. On, uh, now I don't want to go onto that little island. I want to go back to the uh, main section here. It's dark. It's sleepy time. It's 3 a.m. We're going to rest for five hours. Good. Today is the day of the dead. In Daggerfall, they believe that the dead rise up on this holiday uh, to wreak vengeance on the living. King Lysandus Spectre began haunting on this day. <clears throat> Crazy. Is every other NPC voice acted? Uh, main quest NPCs are. Some of the side quest NPCs are. All of them, absolutely not. Anything added by mods, absolutely not. Alright. No one can challenge me. Mm -hmm. Gothic is a janky game that... Uh, Really requires that you break it to have fun, unfortunately. If you, you play by its rules, now. you will be sad. Or, not not its rules, but the if, if you play the way its conveyance directs you to, you will be sad. I'll see you I'll see you <gasps> Whoop. Okay. Like a much, much less forgiving Morrowind. Yes.
Mm-hmm. Beetles and scripts. Okay. I'm gonna get attacked again. Which is your favorite Elder Scrolls game? Morrowind or Daggerfall, depending on what I'm looking for. Yes. Here we go. Yeah, Marwind isn't really a hard game per se, more an unintuitive game. Hunger and thirst. I must eat of the food. Where are the eggs? There are no eggs, only cooked mushrooms. <clears throat> what about water? There's water. Yes. Do, 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 do. Hey, yep. Yeah, alchemy or enchanting can break Morrowind pretty early. True. Okay. Onwards and sideways. We're almost there. Mm -hmm. But, um. Here we go. This is going to be fun. Daggerfall is actually a lot more straightforward than Morrowind as far as mechanics go, which is ridiculous. I'll see you dead. I'll see you dead and dead. And it won't be me. A wood elf. Or fine plates. Okay. Whoop. Fight, Nixie hound. We're getting there. We're heading back to Caius. Right now. By way of all the monsters. The wrong to mess with. Damn, that's some paralysis right there. Crazy. Ba -ba -ba. Now I'm thinking about it. There's all kinds of... Uh, how would I call it? Uh, Elix. Elix is another game where if you play it the way it wants you to, you will suffer. Whereas if you go get a, uh, a gun first, all of a sudden the game is way better. Okay, constant effect restore stamina. We have that underneath our robe. You see that skirt right there? That extravagant skirt restores fatigue. Now, uh, what were we doing? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to fight the, what do you call it? The wyvern. The wyvern's up there. It shoots fireballs down at us. So what we have to do is use a summon uh, storm at Turnock. With a frost atronach and a flame atronach. Oh no, I don't have enough mana for that. What a shame. I'll just have to trust in my uh, frost and flame. That's incredible! Fire atronach's up too. There we go. I can't hit that. It's too high in the air. Now you're going to All I can do is watch as my allies, uh, yeah, and it won't be me. You chose the oh, wrong it dropped down. Cool. We got it. Mm-hmm. Someone uh, came over to watch you play Test 3 MP when it came out. How many times did it take to hit something? Oh, oh, it depends on how you built your character and what kind of weapon you're using. If you're using the starting weapon at the beginning of the game, then um, you will suffer. Iron weapons are bad. And uh, if it isn't your primary skill, then it's even worse. You heard Elix 2 is pretty rough? 
I have not played Elix 2, although I did buy it. I bought Elix 2 and have yet to play it. All right. Oh, oh. Okay. Rat. You should run. He says broken and trash. Interesting. Take two is a bad company. Yes. Take two is getting ownership of uh, Gearbox, right? Can't wait to see what they do with Borderlands. No, 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 no. Okay, we got him. Next sound was uh, coming in. That should be Aldrun. Caius Kosadis is not in Aldrun. We're going to take a, uh, a Silt Strider from there. Yep, not much to worry in Borderlands. I have enjoyed Borderlands 1 and 2. People tell me good things about the pre-sequel. Borderlands 3 is, uh, according to my friends who I trust, a good video game mechanically. You just have to ignore the story, which is unfortunate because the story is very in your face. Yay. Uh, Borderlands 2, yes. It was fun. Oh, God, Kagadi. Now you're going to get it. Damn right, Fargoth paralyzed it. Yeah, I've heard good things about the pre-sequel, but I've never played it. Hmm. No one can challenge the mighty Fargoth. We gotta go to the town. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Borderlands 1 and 2. Played uh, the hell out of Borderlands uh, 1 with Kat. I think she's on a uh, Stardew Valley stint with her friend right now. Which makes sense. Stardew Valley is a fun game. Especially with the new updater. Uh, okay. We did it. We've arrived. Oh, oh right. What else? Oh, no, I was going to turn around and use the uh, Silt Strider. My bad. I got distracted. I've never played Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Probably never will. This way. Yeah, I, um, I really like Stardew Valley. Why walk when you can... Good day, Outlander. I'm the caravanner for Aldrin. Planning a journey. What's your destination? Uh, Balmora. Where would you like to go? I spent ten gold pieces getting to Balmora. Let's go. I liked Tiny Tina in uh, Borderlands uh, 2, was it? Or she showed up for like five minutes to tell you about to like do two small quests and that was it. Favorite vampire themed game? I mean, Vampire of the Masquerade Bloodlines. Once you install the community patch, you need the community patch. Otherwise, it's uh, not a great game. Uh, it's, it's got issues. Otherwise, hello. Are you here to discuss your orders, or is there something else you want? Of course, of course. Uh, save as we will be doing this next time. Hello, Caius. Are you here to discuss your orders? You've spoken with Sulmatul and Nibani Misa, and from what they say, it sounds like you could really be the Nereverin. That's just incredible. But I'll have to get used to the idea. Let me try to get word to Mera Milo. Maybe she can find out whether the dissident priests have any lost prophecies. But in mm. the meantime, I have a very tough assignment for you. Do you think you're ready? Hmm. Don't get overconfident. But it so happens that I agree. You're ready. But just in case, I'm going to give you 400 drakes. Before you head out, make sure you outfit yourself with healing potions, new gear, a little training, whatever you think you need most. And remember, if you get in trouble, back off, 
rest up, and go back fresh. Don't get cocky. I think this will be a tough one. Here's your mission. Fort Buckmoth sent a patrol to Gnar Mok, hunting smugglers with Sixth House connections. They found a Sixth House base, a Sixth House shrine, and a Sixth House priest named Dagoth Garrus. Speak to Champion Raisa Pulia at Fort Buckmoth. She'll tell you about the patrol and the Sixth House base. Your orders, find that Sixth House base, kill Dagoth Garres, and bring me a full report on the Sixth House base. That sounds pretty cool, but I gotta take off for a little while. Uh, thank you all for watching. I will be... Uh, <clears throat> I I'm going to be doing uh, Minecraft tomorrow. Uh, specifically Craft to Exile. Then um, my plans are Daggerfall on Friday and Baldur's Gate on Saturday. We'll see how well that works out. But for now, I'll see y'all later. I gotta go rest. I may be back later with some other nonsense, but that'll be nonsense if I do.